Hello everyone and welcome to this, the final race of the Porja Esports Carrera Cup Brazil here at Interlagos. I am Connery Maddock and joining me in the commentary for today will be the one, the only Mr. Paul Smith. Paul, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you very much Connery and uh, I'm looking forward to today's broadcast. It's something a bit different for us but it's certainly going to be an exciting race. Yeah, definitely hoping to be exactly that. We're here on the IR. Brought to you by Racebot TV as well. We do have qualifying going on out there on track for you right now. And just to give a little bit of a background uh, about how we got to this point, what the entire point of this series is. This is a series only open to Brazilian participants, uh, uh, an initiative by Porsche uh, to get the scene really, really evolved in that particular area of the world. And we've already had three races so far that happened off broadcast. We had the Agriotech Electrons take the race one win. We had UI1 Positive Sim Racing Porsche take race two and uh, Dravena Esports take race three and the top 10 in each of those races qualified themselves into this final race here today where the winners of which will actually go to the prize giving ceremony for the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup uh, in November to receive their trophies. There'll be various giveaways going on uh, throughout the broadcast as well through Porsche's own uh, Instagram account. So keep an eye out for that one. But with qualifying underway, the laps going in right now and the final laps going to be set up here, Paul. Uh, this is going to be the point where you can start to stamp your authority on the race before it even starts. Yeah, absolutely. This is where you you can you can really help yourself in this broadcast in this broadcast in this race. Oh, we need all the help in the broadcast <laughs> that we can get. But uh, oh. Positive sim racing, not the plainest of laps here. They've yet to set a qualifying time. This is why I came on board with them. And they're making mistakes in in the mid part, mid part of the uh, of the circuit in that uh, middle sector. It's a really tricky circuit to get set up your car for because you've got the uh, first and third sectors really fast, high speed, long straightaways. But then that middle sector is really tight and intricate and a very technical sector. So uh, it is tricky and it uh, does produce some really outstanding mm. racing around this track, especially with these cars. That's not a great lap there for UI1 Positive Sim Racing. Porsche P22 on the grid in this one. And more like they're going to improve even further. Here comes Drivex Esports then across the line. Roque Garcia behind the wheels, able to get his team up into P8 on the grid. We're waiting for Shell V Power as well. Currently second in qualifying. Do they improve? It's 134.513. It's not going to mean they improve. And in fact, SRB, uh, SRB Racing there get themselves up into P2, but just as as I mentioned that the Agriotech Electrons car uh, get themselves up onto the front row of the grid. That's your race winner from race one of this weekend. So they continue on their good run of form in this one. SUV racing, or oh, sub racing yellow. They have still yet to set a lap time here in qualifying. They are the only car to have not set a lap time uh, so far in, here in qualifying. So up into the tight and twisty middle sector they go. Seems like they've backed off of this one just a bit, yeah. but they do have the laps in hand to be able to use, Paul. This is technically their second lap of four. A fitness racing what a, a lap put themselves third place the current provisional pole sitters they're done for qualifying they've had their laps and they're only uh what 12 one thousandths of a second in pole position so that just goes to show how close it is uh kind of reminds us of the uh, Porsche three spot super cup that we're covering yesterday first in 23rd and by second yeah very close stuff indeed Sub racing yellow, they're heading their way towards the end of the lap now. So this will be arguably with how slow they were going on this, that will also be the start of their flying lap, I suspect, as they drive to the line. Four minutes left here in qualifying, so still plenty of time for sub racing to get themselves uh, a very quick flying lap here. There is the timer starting then as they head their way down in towards the center S's then. Yoao did Gregorio here behind the wheel of that sub racing yellow Porsche. Very, very tight to that curve, very tight to the white line. 
uh, coming through to, through the Curva del Sol, and you got to eye up your breaking point here down into the Decedas Lago. One of the most fun corners in motorsports, but uh, Sub Racing Yellow just being a little bit tentative with that one, arguably. Take a good amount of curve on that inside, though. Uh, so for Yo out here, I think, Paul, this is just him getting a lap in and not risking starting at the back of the grid. Yeah, I mean, with this circuit, incidents can happen, especially into turn one. Oh, look at that. The qualifying times coming in, fitness racing, snow shouting. They, uh, they've come in, are they in second place now because of uh, their lap time? I think my timing screen is just playing up a little bit here. No, they are in second, according to uh, the timing screen. So uh, they've really uh, put a lap time in there. But here we go, some racing yellow coming through towards Junkau. Important to get the speed out this corner, not using all the road there. And so we'll see what sort of lap time we can get out of this. He does have a chance to do one more lap time here as well. So uh, it's not the end of the world. Maybe getting a banker lap in here and then really pushing on for a, a lap time at the end here. Yeah, you can expect him to just stay out there on circuit. Across the line, P27 here. Not the best of qualifying times, but I think it's exactly what I said just a couple of moments ago, Paul. Just uh, Yoel getting himself a bit of a banker lap in for that sub racing yellow card. Just to clear up a little bit the format that we have here, it's going to be two drivers as part of one car. We will have a driver change in the middle of this 70 lap event here today. So definitely a team effort, but qualifying is definitely single driver in that particular aspect. Fitness uh, racing then across the line they will go this is their last attempt to try and get pole position a 134 275 to beat it's a 134 352 that is simply not going to be enough for the number 27 car to get themselves onto pole position ui1 positive sim racing Porsche though they're heading their way through the final couple of corners these are race two winners here uh, for the number 15 car currently starting in p5 in this particular race, but can they improve position? Renan Azaredo through the final corner, then drive to the line for the number 15. Can they improve on P5? They can. It's going to be an improvement all the way up to P3 with a 134.35 there. That is only half a... Well, that's going to be five thousandths of a second off of P2 there. So that's how close the front of your field is. Yeah, I think, uh, I think my timing screen's uh, slightly broken on the side there, but it's giving the right positions, that's the main thing. Drive X Esports, they are seventh place and they're going to be finishing there as well. That's a car on a bit of a slow run here. So we nearly got everybody setting lap times. Yeah, that's this car, yes, they're done. not going to get a lap done. So yeah, so that's going to be everyone setting lap times here then. Yes, it is. So your pole position sitters will be the Corinthians Ronaldo car with a 134.275. What a fantastic lap for them. This is your starting grid here for this race here today. We see the Corinthians Ronaldo car, pole position, fitness racing, snow shatten there on that front row as well. So neither of the three uh, race winners that we've had previous are actually on that front row surprisingly enough so the teams further down the field really uh, getting themselves the effort required getting themselves up there ui1 positive center racing Porsche will start in p3 with agree attack electron in p4 srb racing and shell v power will be p5 and p6 then drivex esports will line up in p7 Devena Esports P8 with uh, Brandt Racing in P9 with Bravis E Motorsports bringing things down to P10. Aguiatech Sim Experience will line up P11 with Corinthians Viola in P12. Fitness Racing Snow Shatton will start in P13 with the Corinthians Socrates car in P14. Corinthians Neto in P15. Fitness Racing Snow Shatton again in P16 because they named the car all the same thing. That's going to be a bit confusing. But Agria Tech Divina Pizza there in P17. Corinthians Revelino in P18 with Euphoria Drive at Scalpers and Sub Racing Yellow bringing things all the way down to P20 on this grid. Euphoria, DriveX, Atlantic Motorsports, Grande Primo Esports uh, will start in P23. Agriotech, MVPAC, Embargalens in P24. PC Gaming TV will start 25th with Track Friends Racing, P26 with Interlagos Motorsports in 27th. 
Uh, Grande Premio Esports, the number 44 car for them in P28, with Grande Premio Esports, the number 96 in P29, with Leperoni Racing, the last qualifier on your 30 car grid here today. And it's only a matter of time as these guys take themselves uh, towards the, well, I wouldn't say the grid, it is the middle of the racing circuit, a shortened pace lap here to get things started for the rolling start. And with how close things are right at the front of that field, I think we're in for a brilliant race, a brilliant scrap at the front, especially at a racetrack like, in, like Interlagos, Paul, where side-by-side -side racing is very much promoted through that middle sector. It certainly is, and... Uh plenty of opportunities to get a cut back to be able to work your way through so definitely plenty could happen here in this one but uh, it's certainly uh, a tricky track and uh, one that does uh, favor the brave uh, it's certainly uh, one thing i would say about this place yeah absolutely as the cars roll off then of course, about half a lap under the safety car here before that pulls down onto the pit lane and we can get the race started here today. There's the Corinthians Ronaldo car. We're riding on board with them. Pole position. Let's see what they can do with their advantages that they have into this race here today. And of course, further back to the field, we do have the P6 starter. That's Shell V Power. Actually have two drivers behind the wheel uh, that actually do race in the Porsche Carrera Cup Brazil on the real life side of things. So it's an impressive qualifying performance for them. And let's see if that can translate coming into the race as well. The whole field just snaking themselves through the final sector, preparing themselves here for the race start. Pace car on the way up towards Yun Sao, and everyone preparing to get themselves double file. Of course, you don't want any incidents under the pace lap here. Of course, that has happened before in our racing history. Let's not forget about that, but everyone seems to be relatively okay. Luincio Gonzaga will be the driver that gets control of the field once that uh, Porsche pace car pulls down onto the pit lane. 30 Porsches here today. 30 teams, 60 drivers, ready to take the green flag and for 70 laps of race, racing. Pace car down on towards the lane. And the green flag out. The green light shows. We're going to go racing here at Interlagos for the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Brazil. Fantastic launch for P1, but there's a huge scrap for those other podium positions on the way down towards the center S's. The leader has actually pushed a little bit wide there, but they had such an advantage still... down into the first corner that yeah. they don't have to worry. But what is worrisome is what's gone on at the back of the field there. A couple of drivers and teams involved in what seems to be a major incident down at the center S's. We'll get a replay, Paul. Yeah, we certainly will. So there was a multiple cars involved in this one, but there was one car up and over, and it's the, uh, oh, well, there's the 88 is involved. There's the uh, number 10 as well, Corinthians Neto. They actually went up and over, so uh, hardly an ideal start for them. But we'll, uh, we'll stay green for the time being as we head on through the infield now. Yeah, through the infield for the first time. Bits of scrapping for positions just outside your top five as they head their way through turn eight. Then into the pin arena of turn nine there, side by side between Brandt Racing and the Corinthians Viola car on the way up towards the Pico Tapato. That's Corinthians Viola on the inside. They get a little bit of a slide on, but they're able to hold it together and still bring it, they bring the battle down through turn 11. Then Corinthians Viola looking for the cutback move off the corner. Not going to happen but unfortunately for them, so they can't take the battle up towards Yun Sao as we head towards the end of the first lap of 70 here today. We're thinking of one scheduled pit stop here at Alicia Drivers, and that is required by the rules anyway because the driver change that they will have to do. So with one lap in the books, we only have one major incident down into the center S's for the first time. Yeah, no, that's that's good starting. That's, uh, that's good to see that... Um no real other major instance, although I say that, I just noticed somebody falling down the timing screen. So, uh, uh, yeah, something's happened there for the uh, Bravus uh, e Motorsports team in turn number one. And it is a tricky corner. It's so easy to lock up your rear tyres. Um, well, we'll see what happens here. And that's exactly what's happened there. They've locked up the rears and around the girl. 
Yeah, and they will not collect anyone else. Thankfully enough for the drivers and teams further back through the field. On the live pictures, though, there's someone that has pushed relatively wide there uh, coming through the Cedar de Lago. The Bravacy Motorsports car continuing to be in a little bit of a world of hurt here as they continue to fall even further down the field. They're actually on the attack, perhaps, trying to come up towards this middle sector once again. Here comes the Atlantic Motorsports car oh. on that very inside. And that's Privacy Motorsports spun towards the middle of the circuit. No one else collected in that one, but they had a heavy bit of contact from the PC Gaming TV car on that outside. We'll get the replay up. Yeah, that was a little bit ambitious, shall we say. Uh, was that move that was happening? The door was always closing, and then, boom, gets hit around. And one more, just for good measure. There you go. Yeah, they have to wait so long for the rest of the field to file their way through as well. It does cycle them all the way to the back of the field, and of course they'll have to carry that damage through at least the rest of this first stint here. Here's the battle for P1, though. Corinthians Ronaldo still leading with UI1 Positive Sim Racing Porsche being the car second in line and the car that we were on board with right now. It's a very good run through the center S's, though, for Azaredo. This is where you can set up the run through Curva del Sol and look to make a pass down into turn four, but you can just see that uh, Gonzaga, who's the pilot of the car ahead, uh, trying to break the draft, trying to weave about all over the place, but you can't do that too much uh, unless you draw the ire of the stewards, for example. So it does have to be a bit careful, but positive simulators in Porsche seem to have a pretty good amount of pace coming through that first sector. But it's only a matter of time now before they capitalize, you have to argue. Well, how long before tactics start coming into play in strategy? Because there's so much of this track is affected by slipstream. Do you just sit behind and wait and save yourself a little bit of fuel? Or do you make the move now and hope that you can break that slipstream and pull away at the front? Because it's a queue of cars. They've got five car breakaway here at the moment with the, uh, the Shell V-Power car bringing up the rear of this queue. But really, these, these drivers, they're all, they're all in a line. They're not really making too many moves. Although, as I say that, the uh, second place uh, positive sim racing car is certainly putting an effort in. Yeah, and they might just be lining up, sizing up the move across the start finish line. Actually, Azarela's gonna back out of that one, not feeling entirely confident to try and sling one down the outside there. Uh, into the center S's, so it's a uh, race conservation arguably here for positive sim racing Porsche. They do not want to go for the risky moves this early on in the race, but if an obvious door is left open by Gonzaga, then he's going to be heading his way down the inside, no problems. There's a car that went off very wide uh, coming through the turn three there. That was the Shell V-Power car, uh, just having a couple of problems with the exit of turn three, but they seem to be okay. And this one, it is a five-car breakaway right at the front of your feet. Field. The second train will be led by the Devena Esports car, Neto Nascimento, behind the wheel of that one. So already the pack's starting to split up here, Paul. I spot four racing packs out there on circuit. So that is just going to be the situation we see side by side. Further back through the field, though, that's going to be, if I can spot them, the number one involved in that one. That's Euphoria Drive at Scalpers having a little bit of a scrap with the others around him. That's going to be Interlagos Motorsports behind them. That's the Aguiatec MV Pack and Balagans behind them as well. So this is your basically your third battle pack out there on circuit. Yeah, it was Atlantic Motorsport that actually made the move uh, there. So they uh, gained the position that way. So um, we've seen the change of position further down the field. Yeah, as you mentioned, it's all breaking up into little packs here and uh, there's gaps formed where, uh, where teams have got involved in, uh, say, little uh, incidents. So definitely, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's all pretty tight together, though, it must be said. I mean, we'll show you on the track map there. You can see how everybody's still pretty much uh, all together. So uh, that will spread out throughout this race. As mentioned, 70 laps here in this one. So plenty to happen oh. as oh, we've got multiple instants at turn one and turn two. Oh, the first one involving Interlagos Motorsports there and the Agriotech MV Pack car. And uh, of course, there has been a secondary incident here that we'll get a look at as well. So here's the first one down in towards 
Uh, turn one. Oh, multiple. They all they basically happened at the same time there. So the one in the back of the shot was the Agri Tech and the Interlagos Motorsports car. And then the one at the front was the PC Gaming TV and the Agri Tech Div uh, Divina Pizza car. So both Agri Tech cars that are in this sort of mid pack getting themselves involved into instance there. That first one is definitely the fault of the car behind the number 42. I'm just getting myself another look at the other one as well. Uh, that will be the, if I can find them, the PC Gaming TV car involved in that. And again, it's uh, a little bit more of a fine margin in that one because the Tech were trying to cut down, uh, being the car behind, take the normal racing line, but it was slightly misjudged as PC Gaming came up in the middle of the corner. So I'd argue the, uh, uh, the one at the front was a bit more of a racing instant, but the one behind was the uh, car at the back just running into the back bumper. Interesting to note, the front three have made a little bit of a break away from F SRB, but that has actually brought others further down from that sixth place down into this battle. So actually, it's, 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 even though they've split slightly, the slipstream is still in effect, so you're getting people, look at that, the Shell oh. V-Power team, very aggressive. Uh, but the 22 of SRB decided, no, you're not going past us, not yet. Yeah, so Shell V Power just being held behind for now. Gustavo Ariel behind the wheel of that one. And of course, the driver getting ready to get in for that, uh, for that final stint will be Felipe Baptista, which will be the real-life Porsche, uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Brazil driver. So we're going to see some, perhaps some fun things once he gets behind the wheel of that Shell V-Power car. But for now, it is Ariel that's piloting that thing around and trying to make up positions. He's already made up one in his qualifying. Started sixth, is now in fifth place. And he can look on the lap time delta charts in the bottom right of your screen. He is gaining on SRB, on SRB Racing here. So we could be seeing a change for position four in a not too distant future if that trend continues but the, they also have to be concerned about not losing your front three runners as well. Yeah, that's it. All this fighting, all this uh, squabbling is going to slow each other down, and that potentially means that we're going to have the leaders gap them out, and that's what's happening here to a degree. The leaders are now a second ahead of these two battling away. The lights are flashing. <laughs> that's the first light flash that we've seen on the broadcast. So uh, <laughs> Gustavo is certainly uh, feeling keen to get past. Yeah, particularly eager to try and get this pass complete. And here we go, the oh. run out of the Cura del Sol, and that was just given away for SRB. Slow and they there? actually, yeah, they actually give multiple positions away. I'm going to have a look. They did cut across the curb in quite hefty fashion through the first apex of the Santa Reses, and in my books, that's definitely a slowdown penalty. So I think that is what's happened here. They are in a side-by-side -side battle with DriveX Esports as a result as they try to recover from that penalty up towards Ferradura, the very fast turn six right-hander coming up the hill. They are able to hold position, but the damage has already been done. Yeah, certainly has. And uh, that's one thing. You, you can use the uh, the curbs here at Interlagos. And... Uh, you can get a little bit too greedy at times, and that means that you end up with those slowdown penalties. Don't get yourself too many of those, or else you will be uh, losing out a considerable amount of time here in this one. Yep, you will. A bit of trouble further down the field. The number 44 has gotten themselves into a couple of problems. That's the Grande Primo Esports number 44 car. Let's see what has happened to them on the replay. It looks like it's going to be an optimistic move down the inside of the right, and they go for it, but they overcook it, and the car just completely broke away from them as they headed their way across the curb there. So it's uh, Sacra uh, Sa Saraceno behind the wheel of that 44 car, just being a, a little aggressive here at the early stages, but, you know, he does get punished for it, and now he files towards the back of the field. He runs, is in, well, he's in P24 now, so... Not exactly ideal for the number 44, but there is still a long while in this race. Still plenty of time to recover. Yeah, we've, we've effectively got a Grand Prix distance here uh, in this race with being 70 laps. So uh, these drivers are going to be pushing hard, but they don't have to do it individually. They have they have got to uh, change the driver part way through. We do have a stop-go penalty for Luis Pame Jr. There, we're not exactly sure uh, which car that this one is going to be. 
Uh, so we'll get to find that one out in a relatively short fashion, but uh, it's going to be a 60 second stop go penalty uh, for them, which isn't uh, great, shall we say. That is a very, very long time to be stopped on the pit lane for, as I'm just trying to get confirmation of exactly which car this is, but still, 60 seconds stop and uh, 60 seconds stop and go there, Paul. Oh, that's basically dear. put them a lap down. Oh. oh, there's a big moment there. It's Bravis again. They're just having no luck as this uh, 21 car. Let's see what happened here as they come around into the corner. Oh dear, they just lost control and get pushed around and then get hit again and hit again. Oh, it's, it's all. It, I, I think it might want to write off today straight away. Yeah, I think so as well. We'll get another look on it. Again, it's Bravo Simo Sports on their way up towards the middle sector. Look for an outside line. Oh, that's not going to happen. Up over the curb. Car just lost control and every, everyone, literally everyone, just piles into that one. And uh, Bravacy Motorsports, you quite rightfully said it, Paul. <laughs> it might as well write off that car at this moment in time. They're not going to get anywhere in this race with uh, damage like that. As we have confirmation, it's the 24 car that has been given a 60-second stop and haul penalty here. That's the Agriotec uh, Davina Pizza car They're heading their way down onto pit lane, and they will be stationary for a while. Yep, so basically losing a lap here. Because the lap is only a minute and a half around here, so uh, yeah, pretty much right off uh, their day here today uh, for any chance of taking a win. Shell V-Power, they're, uh, they're working their way through this field. They're onto the back of this uh, leading battle now. So they're showing, some good, it, it, they're showing some good pace in the race here, and that's what you need in an event this long. You need good race pace. Qualifying, yes, it matters, but really you want to uh, you want to get a good race pace and be the fastest consistently throughout the race yeah you do so as i said the qualifying performance not exactly ideal for shell v power even though a p6 uh, qualifying position is still a pretty good one it seems like their race pace is a little bit better here and they actually you know as a result of gaining on getting onto the back of this leading pack they can use all the slipstream required to drag themselves around the racing circuit the uh Devena esports car hasn't really fallen that far off the back of this one either so uh the race leaders starting to close up a little bit at this stage of the race but with still about 60 and a half laps to go i'll call it it's still very much all undecided. That fitness racing Snow Shatton car, though, very squirrely uh, coming through the turn four to Cedar de Lago, struggling to keep hold of that car. And now they come under threat from the Shell Fee Power car up towards Ferradora. Going to stay in line for this one. We're riding on board with the fitness racing car as that Shell Fee Power car looks to make the move perhaps into turn eight. Not going to go for the lunge just yet, but you can just see how Ariel's just making that uh, Shell Porsche just really, really big in the mirrors of that. That fitness racing car yeah this is this is intense pressure being applied right here and uh, the, the the way that it can attack there and really get in close it makes it look ominous it makes it look big and menacing and that's exactly what uh, he wants to do he wants to try and intimidate the driver in the 27 but you know, these drivers didn't make it to this point without being good drivers. So, uh, you know, it's going to take quite a bit to be able to force the mistake from Rodrigo. Yeah, we have a drive-through penalty for the number 72. That is the PC Gaming TV car uh, that have been uh, given the drive-through penalty for an instant just a little bit uh, earlier on. So I'll have to bring that car down in. So... At least, I guess they'll be saying, well, at least we don't have to stop in our box for about a minute like one other team. But they're also three laps down in the race lead already in the last place. Yeah. Uh, it's not really that much of a, of a penalty, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest. But um, if the stewards have deemed that that's, um, that's the decision they're making, then uh, that, that must be it. And uh, it's great to have live stewarding in an event like this as we've got a little bit of side-by-side -side and uh, Brandt. Racing. Oh, no. Ronaldo, but race lead, race lead. He's gone for a spin coming through the middle sector. That's Luinso Gonzaga there. Corinthians Ronaldo, they drop all the way back into P6. We'll get the replay up for you now. This is a solo car instant. No one else involved in this one. Trying to get the car turned in for Ferradora, but 
It just didn't want to. It just straight lined the entire corner there, Paul. That is weird. It's almost like he didn't realize where he was on the track. And missed his breaking point and thought, oh, no. And uh, went straight up. That is a really bizarre incident. We're just having a look at it again. All of a sudden, oh, no. No, oh. I've not braked hard enough from around the go. Yeah, it just... A bit of a lapse in concentration, perhaps. Just not getting the breaking point right for Ferradora. You can see, uh, as a result, once he finally realized and stamped on the brakes, that just locked the rears up and just spun that car right around. But luckily, they don't get anything in the way of uh, contact there as uh, that Corinthians Ronaldo car down into P6 after starting on pole position and leading the first couple of laps of this race. Now they will have to recover things from outside of the top five so that is a sketchy situation for them but that could have ended so much worse there uh with how fast that particular sequence of corners uh is if he spun all the way around then maybe he'd be down outside the top 10 instead of being recovered being in a position to recover from p6 absolutely but it just goes to show how easily it is to make a mistake around this track you know, just carry too much speed into a corner and and with this car because it's not got it yes it's got aerodynamics but it's not got the greatest amount of aerodynamics it's not like a not like a gte car you know it's 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 very sort of rudimentary aerodynamics it's got a front, it's a front splitter and it's got a rear wing and that's about it really there's no complex little winglets or things like that this car is very much engine in the rear and uh, away you go. And, but it's certainly it's fun. Yeah, very fun car to drive indeed. And when it first came out here on Yaris Racing Service, it is, uh, was one of the only cars that uh, I uh, took out to race and uh, you know just played around with it a little bit. It is a, a true racer's car, but looks like we'll get some racing for P13 here. Euphoria Drive X on board with them. Trying to chase down that fitness racing snow shatten car, the number two uh, car for that, or the, rather the zero two uh, for that particular Porsche. On the way down to the San Reses, Euphoria looking very aggressive into there, but can't find a uh, offensive line at all to be able to bring it side by side. A very good amount of pace through the start of the Curva del Sol, though. Is that going to pay dividends when it comes towards turn four? I do not think so, but this entire mid pack is very, very stacked together. Yeah, it's, it's the reason why we're looking at it. It's all, it's all fighting and scrapping uh, between them, and uh, it's certainly great to, uh, to look at and to uh, keep an eye on what's happening here. Uh, because they're still only they're only 10 seconds behind the race leader here these lots so they, they can't count them out at the moment mm. okay they're battling it out for for like 14th 13th positions but they're, they're still in within the chance of getting up into the front pack so we don't write any of these drivers off yet anything could and probably will happen in this race oh look at them nose to tail through turn 10 there Fantastic stuff. Very small margins being given, but still relatively clean at this stage. Up in towards Yun Sao then, on board with Euphoria Drive X then. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Mies behind the wheel of the 219 car. They're going to get very close here down into the center S, as I suspect, with how close they were off of Yun Sao. We might just see passes happen here down in towards turn one if Euphoria especially decides to go with the amount of draft that they have. But Again, very, very conservative here down in towards the center S is not uh, balls to the wall racing like we saw in the first couple of laps. This is where everyone starts to calm down a little bit. But just as I say that, Corinthian Socrates make a gap uh, over that Brandt racing car. They'll take it side by side off the Curva del Sol and continue to do so all the way down the back straight here to the Decido del Lago. Typically a single line, but two can work here and they will be able to make it work. Socrates get them themselves ahead of the Brandt Racing car and now Fitness Racing look to pick up the pieces up towards Ferradura. We have a battle going on ahead as well. That's the Shell V-Power car trying to make a gap over the other Fitness Racing car, the number 20 
27 as they follow very close to that rear bumper coming through the Pinarino up towards the Pico Tapato again trying to find the line is Ariel but everything is being covered right now by Barino but the thing is he pushes wide off the corner and they're through turn 11 Shell will have to go around the outside look for the cutback move for the left hander of Yun Sao go hard on the brakes into here and you might be able to make that pass work Ariel oh he's not going to be able to make the move complete at least yet he does get himself ahead and here comes Davina Esports as well on that inside line through the final couple of corners the very fast left handers fitness racing they are hemorrhaging positions here as everyone just steamrolls them down on the inside SRB even looking to make it three wide against the pit wall on the brakes they go into the center S it is still Shell V power ahead finally they get the moves complete but the battle's not done because Corinthians Ronaldo your previous race leader your pole position sitter trying to make their way through in the side by side through the Gerber del Sol. This is great racing. This is fantastic as all of this. It's still going on here for uh, for fifth and sixth place as they're going down into Cover de Sol. Uh, not Cover de Sol, Descent de Larco. Uh, it's been a long day. And uh, <laughs> as they go through there, wide goes the Corinthians Ronaldo team using the, uh, the runoff there and having to just slot back in in sixth place. But that was really, really aggressive, but really fair driving from the Shell Vee Power team, it must be said, because they did give space, not a lot of space, <laughs> but they did give space on the outside of Zhu Tao, but it did mean that they had a slower exit, and that put them under pressure from those cars behind them, like Fitness Racing Snow Shatter. The racecraft was absolutely brilliant through that particular sequence. Everyone giving each other room, racing room to work with. It doesn't mean you have to leave an acre or so on the inside line. Just give enough space for that car to work with, and then you can have a pretty fair battle indeed. But it is Shell V-Power now up into P2, but they have company and company indeed. Uh, this just gives a chance now. You can see the lap gap towards your race leader of UI1 Positive Sim Racing Porsche. It's up to two seconds, so they're looking behind them and saying, come on, guys, just keep fighting because I can run away. Yeah, th this is what that uh, UI Positive Sim Racing Porsche wants, and they're certainly getting it right now, although they're all in single file again. And look at this. This is second all the way down to fourth, uh, down to tenth. No, ninth place. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Yeah, but that is just goes to show how close this entire field is, and it's uh, the type of racing that we're used to seeing in these uh, Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars. Of course, uh, on the iRacing channel, we do have the Porsche Esports Super Cup, where week in, week out, it is just bonkers racing, very, very close indeed, and it seems like that is holding true here today as well as the car that's very, very wide indeed there. Uh, coming through the Decida de Lago and they'll have to back bring it side by side. That's Brandt Racing in that number 23 car that pushed pretty wide, but they're able to hold position in that sort of situation. And uh, that's something I've seen a lot of teams do is again, Brandt Racing coming under huge threat here uh, from the Fitness Racing uh, number, number 14 car. But this is what I've seen a lot of cars do. They just track out so, so wide uh, coming through the Decida de Lago, especially when they're in the side-by-side -side or potential side-by-side -side battle like that of course you do have a huge amount of runoff on the exit of that corner but remember with the track redesigns this track has gone through that hasn't always been the case so very thankful that that area is uh, paved on the exit of turn four there for the amount of drivers that have been running wide yeah they'll, they'll be happy that they've, they've got that get up jail free card there to be able to go around the outside so uh, definitely those uh, that set team they're thankful and they're able to carry on and fight for another day. Speaking of fighting for day, that's at Shell V Power Team. How are the pressure now from Fitness Racing Snow Shatter? Our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth all in one line. And they're carrying on down into Descent de Lago once again. And we'll see how this one pans out. But already we're almost. Uh, Almost, almost at the 20 lap mark already. This has been a, a fast and frenetic. Yeah, we've had about 30 minutes, well, 25 to 30 minutes of racing done here, and things, as you can see on your picture, still looking very, very close indeed. Haven't really spread out at all in this one. It's just the race leader that's gotten away by about two and a half seconds. The rest of everyone else seemingly all stacked together, still trying to scrap for these positions as well. 
riding on board here with the car of the uh, fitness racing car the number 27 currently p3 on that podium so if they finish here then they get that trip in november to receive those their trophy on the actual podium of the porsche, uh, porsche carrera cup brazil which would be an absolutely fantastic experience we're talking about this before the broadcast ball where we have uh, at least in iRacing, we have the NASCAR Pigatin 3 Series uh, winner actually going to the final round of the season of the Real Life Series and receiving their prize there. The exact same as the situation here, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, it's great to give these people this recognition. It shows how far esports has come in terms of the motorsport side of things. Just in recent times, in fact, Corinthians Rivaldo on pit road now this isn't a planned pit stop is it so have they had a, had a penalty applied or maybe they've decided to um do something a little bit different but 14.5 seconds i think that might be something like a penalty it might be i'm just having a look it is exactly 15 seconds stopped on the lane we'll have to see if that's a if that's a red herring or not, I would have thought they would have been a little bit longer if they're trying to get uh, fuel tyres, etc. to the end. There's another team on pit road and they're away after 12 seconds. That's Interlagos Motorsport AB. So, um, I don't know if people have maybe under-fueled slightly and uh, think now's the time to top up, get ourselves some fresh air, some clean air and just get laps in. I don't know. Could well be. I've seen nothing come through from a race control as a you know, penalty related. So uh, certainly an interesting predicament down there in the uh, sort of bottom, well, mid pack to bottom end of your field with some drivers, some teams uh, deciding to come in at this stage for what seems to be a very, very short stop indeed. We'll have to see whether that's a splash and dash that they actually require uh, for the end of this race. Again, this is the battle for P2, believe it or not. It's just almost everyone involved in this one, but still no position changes going on just yet. And that's one of the things I've noticed uh, throughout the first portion of this race, despite some of the frantic moments we have had, it seems like overall things have been pretty measured, which surprises me at this racetrack. I think people realize the nature of the race. It's a 70 lap race. You, know, you can't win it at the start. So uh, why bother putting your uh, car at jeopardy and cause yourself issues later on. So we'll, we'll see how this all pans out really, but that lead that Positive Sim Racing have been able to pull out, two and a half seconds now, all because of the pressure that the Shell V-Power uh, team are uh, under at the moment. And uh, Lorenzo, thank you very much Lorenzo, he's believing that we're actually oh, going to start seeing some, Oh, yes. Is that going to start seeing some pit stops, he reckons? Yeah, SRB just had a little bit of a spin, actually. That's going to be Cesar Fruna behind the wheel of that one. Actually, it's not a single car spin. It was the Corinthians Ronaldo car that ran into the back of them. And you'll see that run around in the middle of turn 10. That's Pico Topato. And letting the entire train of that battle for P2 through. We're going to stick on the replay, by the way. Race leader in. Yeah, so there are pit stops happening at this time. I'm going to stick on the replay because I believe I've seen in our timing sheet an issue, and there was an issue, and it was, it, well, Fitness Snow Racing is the one that I saw, but uh, there was another team involved as well. But we'll go back to live pictures then because pit stops are occurring right now, so there must be fuel limited as we go on into this one. Positive Sim Racing already away from their pit stop. Yeah, so about 20 laps on the stint we are looking at here for these guys, at least for this first stint. It seems like almost everyone throughout the entire field has come down in with the exception of the 27 Fitness Racing car, the uh, Devena Esports and Agriotech Electrons car. They are three cars, three teams that have stayed out at least one more lap here. 
And let's see if they're able to make that one work. And, uh, well, I don't think they're going to be able to go much further than the 20 laps on the stand. We do have a bit of a fuel limit going on here in these Borgias, so 40%. So that does complicate things a little bit here. If they can only go 20 laps on the stint here, Paul, that's going to mean that uh, perhaps we might get an interesting situation in terms of when you actually decide to take that driver change because it's not a, sh not a long stop time at all. And when you have short stop turns like this, that means that that driver change is going to be all more impactful about when you decide to take it because it just overruns. But you look at this, you've got three cars that have managed to go a lap longer here that were involved up near the front of your field. So th this will all come to pan out towards the end because if you can save a lap of fuel each stint and be competitive as well with that, then you are in a really good position at the end of the race that that's that's without a doubt because you'll just save yourself that little bit of time on the final pit stop as here comes your race leader down the south finish race there we go that's going to be ui1 positive sim racing Porsche heading their way through in a good bit of clear air as well nothing really will really concern them here at least for the first portion of this second stint. Here comes the car coming off the pit lane, though. This one's going to be close because there's traffic trying to come through the pit lane cars, though. They will be at a straight line speed deficit when it comes to this back straight. That means they do cycle to the back of this particular battle. Flashing of the lights there. That's Corinthians Neto car. That's going to be the car that's actually a lap down, getting themselves out of the way. Particularly dangerous place to do it, coming in towards the braking zone for the Sierra de Lago, but... Um, they do manage to make those passes negotiated pretty efficiently around the outside here. So that is going to be pretty much everyone coming in uh, for their first set of stops here. So with that particular trend, we will be looking to see another pit stop cycle around lap 40 and of course around lap 60 as well uh, for an even shorter stop to try and get yourself the final 10 laps to the end of the race. Yeah, we certainly are. And... Uh... Yeah, this, is, this is where strategy comes to play and this is where anyone with endurance uh, experience will really come to the fore if they're competitive but also able to look after fuel and that will be uh, what happens here but you can see your top eight at the bottom of the screen you like positive sim racing in the lead 2.8 seconds in the shell v power then fitness racing still shutting in third went a lot longer remember so that's going to be crucial to take into account along with uh, Devena Esports they both went that lot longer Corinthians Ronaldo fifth with uh, in fact no Aguiatek is changing position because Corinthians Ronaldo is coming into the pits so Aguiatek Electrons in fifth with Corinthians VL in sixth Aguiatek Sim Experience seventh and Fitness Racing Snow Shatton uh, the other car the O2 car in eighth place Yep, so that is exactly what your top eight looks like here with those first set of stops done. And uh, we're currently looking at the number 27 car, Fitness Racing, number 27 here in the battle for P2 with Shell V-Power. And, uh, well, that Shell car was one of the cars that we saw a little bit earlier on, just worked their way up through the field in pretty convincing fashion. But now, arguably, they're going to be... Uh, the car on the defensive here because Fitness Racing 27 seem to be uh, having a pretty good amount of pace here in this first uh, couple of laps of the second stint here. And this uh, also, this, you know, the entire pit stop sequence is actually separated uh, teams out a little bit here. So we don't have that huge train for P number two anymore. It's just these two cars immediately involved in this one. So. Um, does this give confidence here to Fitness Racing Ooh. that they can go for a move? Ooh, that is a bit of a moment there out of Gunsau sliding it through. I was just going to ask you if it uh, feels like that Fitness Racing can go for more optimistic moves now that they don't have the threat from behind that they'll immediately lose position. But now we won't get the answer because <laughs> he's just slid it through the final corner and lost a lot of time. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate that that happened right when you were trying to make that point. Oh. It's sliding again. Doesn't look comfortable in that car right now, which uh, would be a slight worry for them. And the thing is, if they keep on making these mistakes, they're just going to be falling into the hands of Neto Nesimento behind them. So uh, they've got to be careful with it. Uh, speaking of being careful, these uh, two fighting for sixth place, Corinthians Viola and the Aguiatec, uh, some experienced cars, sixth and seventh, they're pretty close together 
for the moment, but they're uh, still staying as they were. But not having that pressure from behind, just to answer your question, Connery, that really does count towards you. You can really focus uh, just on the on the guy in front and really put the pressure on, whereas rather than having to worry about that person behind and what they're about to do. Yeah. A great attack, same experience though. Locked onto the back of that Corinthians Viola car. Cassie Amelia behind the wheel of the car ahead. We've got uh, Raphael Bervanga in the number 80 that we're on board with right now. Up on your screen for you, three and a half tenths of a second between the two of them coming through this final sector. Uh, pretty bit of a wide line there taken by Sim Experience looking for the run off the corner as uh, they have a little bit of a moment, but they're still with us, heading their way through towards the end of lap 23 here. The Corinthians Villa Cup having to perhaps put up the defense here in this situation. This might be the second time in a row that Agriotech are actually faster than them on the one lap pace. A 135 flat uh, for uh, Agriotech Sim Experience and it's matched by Corinthians Viola, but it marginally, very marginally goes the way of that Agriotech Sim Experience car. As oh, we have a bit of a moment out there on track. Another Agriotech car has had a bit of a moment. That's the MV Pack car that has gotten themselves into a situation here. Let's have a look. Through the slow speed right hander, slides it out, and that is not the first time we've seen that. Carried too much speed into the corner, that's what that was. And they've ended up just looping it around. And they're back up and running again, but that's lost in a couple of positions, uh, unfortunately for them. But they're still in the race, that's the main thing, no major damage, so they're able to carry on. They are, and uh, definitely not the first team to lose it on entry to some of those slow speed corners. Seems like the, uh, the back end does want to step out quite a lot on these uh, Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars. Euphoria Drive X, though, they're currently solidifying their position inside of the top 10 as it stands, and uh, they've made a fantastic amount of positions on their qualifying here. They started in P21, they're up into ninth right now, which is brilliant. They gained 12 positions. Uh, on their qualifying, so working their way through quietly and trying to make a big impact for the end of the race. And they're one of the teams in this field here today, Paul, that do race in the VRS R Racing GT uh, World Championship. So they can bring that experience over into a race exactly like this, where it's sort of half sprint race, half endurance race. And now Rodrigo Mies can make the move in towards the center S, is committed to the outside line on that Fitness Racing 02 car. Can't make the move complete just for now through the S, a section down the hill, and Euphoria going to be setting up for a move a little bit later on now, but that was the first statement of intent for them. Here's a line I've always wanted to say in commentary, and here comes Socrates. Uh, they're <laughs> catching up right behind, and uh, you can see, by the way, the positions gained on the left-hand side of the screen. As you mentioned, 12 positions for that Euphoria drive X car. Corinthians Ronaldo down 11 spots. rest of your uh, sits rest of the field there as well the positions gained and lost so uh, yeah it's uh, it, they've got to be careful they don't start fighting each other too hard because uh, Corinthian Socrates is going to come uh, come up and get involved in fact they are going to get involved right now yes they are they've gotten themselves involved and made this duo a trio Coelho Almedia in that 69 car as well. He's been a bit of a star on the Racebot TV Friday Night Primetime broadcast that we do in the Formula 3, but has traded the open wheels for a Tim Top GT car and seems to be pretty quick in one as well. And inside of this top 10 would be a fantastic finish, but for every single one of these drivers out there, it will be the podium that they're aiming for to get that experience at the end of the year. Let's have a look. Euphoria Drive X Scalpers now another Euphoria car involved in a bit of a battle here for P17. That's going to be with SRB E Racing. But if we go back to 219, they've made the pass, or at least attempting to make the pass actively. You can see the damage on the front of that number one car. But with the side by side going on between P8 and P9 right now, they'll continue to do so through the Curva del Sol. Euphoria Drive X still looking to make the pass, but Fitness Racing has been putting up a fantastic defense so far, 
Here comes Euphoria outside the line for the Decida de Lago. They commit to it. No cutback shenanigans this time. There was a bit of leaning there for Fitness Racing, and they're able to hold station ahead. Corinthian Socrates in the back of this shot, trying to work their way through as well. Again, an outside line attempt by Euphoria Drivex. Can they make this one complete? It'll be pretty tough because they're all right-handers coming up towards the top of the hill here. But if they can hold position, then they'll have the inside for tier 9 and maybe a little bit of a oh. better chance. But there's contact between the two of them. That's Fitness Racing shoved out and spun out. Yeah, it was all... It, unfortunately, I had the feeling that was always going to happen. And... Uh, as I say, unfortunately, that's exactly what's happened right there. That car is crabbing. It's got broken suspension. That's a tow link done, so uh, they're going to have to take some repairs. Here's a look at it then again, and we'll see from above. And it's going into this left-hander. They obviously thought that they uh, had a little bit more room than they, uh, than they did. That just sends, it broke the suspension with the first contact, and then that suspension broke and just sends them around. Yeah, it is such a shame for that uh, fitness racing car. They will drop down through the field now, but the thing is, it isn't the leading uh, fitness racing car. You still have that number 27 up in P3 right now, so it's not a dire day just yet for fitness racing. They still have a couple of chances to get themselves up towards that race lead. Uh, Rodrigo Barino behind the wheel of this 27 car, trying to chase down Gustavo Ariel. These guys have been pretty stuck together, but you can just see on that lap time delta that they're losing time to your race leader, Positive Sim Racing Porsche. That is not what either of these two teams want to see. The gap between themselves looks a little different with Fitness Racing gaining about three and a half tenths of a second on the last lap alone. So maybe a little bit of a mistake there on the last lap for Shell that has put them back into this position now as Fitness Racing, they'll look maybe to try and set up the move out of Yunsao. That would be the best place uh, to be able to do it on their way up towards that corner now. Again, they were able to use the track limits to our advantage on the entry to the corner there and just angle that car in, carry the middle corner speed as much as possible. But Fitness Racing, they just need to arguably just sit in the draft here and uh, try and consider their moves somewhere else. We had a problem with the 100 car. That's uh, Luperoni Racing that have done a loop. Uh, so they're oh, going to be heading line. their way through. That was my line. I hey. <laughs> Luperoni, not Luperoni. There yeah. we go. But but there we go. <laughs> Replay up on screen. Take us through it, Paul. Yeah, and so it's down into the center of the Lago. Nobody nearby. It's going to be a case of just carrying too much speed. And that engine, because that engine's at the back of the car, it acts like a pendulum. So as soon as you, that back end starts rotating out, once it gets past the slip angle, that is it. You are going around whether you like it or not. And that's exactly what we've been seeing time and again in this race here. Yeah, we have problems with entry oversteer. Here comes the move then further down the field. That's the one two one car, just getting themselves uh, past the Corinthian Socrates car. So that is the two Corinthians cars actually perhaps negotiating a little bit of team orders uh, down in towards 10-4. That Ronaldo car seems to be the primary car for them, having gained pole position and the Socrates car starting in P14. So. I don't think the uh, Socrates teammates would uh, want to impede their um, impede their uh, number 20 one to one car here. So just let them through, let them continue on their way. There's no point in battling and losing both cars' time. But uh, for Corinthians Ronaldo, this is still a long way back here. If they want to get anywhere near that top three, they have to gain on the order of about 15 to 20 seconds over the rest of this race. Absolutely, there are. Um, oh, excuse me, uh, voices going. <laughs> As I say, I've been doing a long day today. Um, yeah, the the 20 seconds off of the race lead, and uh, what 15 seconds off of the battle for second place. So definitely, these drivers that uh, for this uh, Corinthians Ronaldo team, they need a bit of a recovery drive. It's not been the start that they would have wanted here today, and they're going to push on as we're almost about halfway through this stint on fuel. So as you mentioned earlier, Connery, it's going to be interesting to see where those pit stops happen and how, uh, how it happens in terms of strategy. Yeah, it would be intriguing to say the least. Drivex Esports just gesturing, trying to off-put the car ahead on the way down towards the Decida de Lago. 
It is a, a valid strategy to go for those sorts of dummy moves, cause the driver ahead of you to look behind and then uh, miss their breaking point coming down into the corner. And uh, we've seen that happen many, many times uh, over the course of the broadcasts here that we've done. But uh, having a look uh, at the lap times compared to the fastest lap times that have been set throughout the race, uh, UI1 Positive Sim Racing Porsche, who are your current race leaders, they haven't really dropped off the pace at all. They're managing the gap uh, at the front of the field. It looks like the rest of the field, though, is suffering from a little bit of tire wear at this point, but I wouldn't say it's bad enough to warrant changing tires on this next stop. Well, th this is a question I was going to pose, is do you actually bother taking tyres at all in this race? Because these cars are good for an hour, potentially longer than that, on a set of tyres, depending on the track and depending on the track conditions. The track temperature isn't actually that high either. It's only, what, the, the mid-20s? Mid so, um... It, it might be worth a risk, or it might be worth taking the fresh tyres. It depends how you're going. Uh, there's a, uh, a change of position there for Ooh, you euphoria. right now. Yeah, Euphoria losing positions there. That's the Corinthians Ronaldo car through, and here comes the Socrates machine as well. Not going to be able to do anything on the exit of the Cairo del Sol. Into turn four, they will stay line of stern, but I'm just going to cycle myself back to see exactly what happened. Uh, to four-year Drivex here. It was the breaking zone into the center S's. It was a committed move by Drivex Esports, and Euphoria were just uh, very, very, uh, I would argue, they were very chivalrous. They were very <laughs> accommodating of the entire train, trying to come through the inside of them and just park it on that outside. So that's a bit of a weird one and uh, a bit of a missed call, I suppose. But then again, if it, the, uh, I do think they maybe overshot just that little bit into the corner, went wide, had the car alongside and just braked that little bit more just to make sure that there wasn't any uh, contact. Although they are struggling with the rear of the car there through the slower corners, getting the power down. So um, I think this might be answering my question as to whether you take tyres or not with the way that that car's swirling <laughs> around after 30 laps. Once a lap 31. So, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's partly down to the strategy that you employ but also partly down to whether you take tyres or not as to how well you're doing this race as they're now going to look at losing another position to the Socrates car. Yeah, outside line chosen, looking for the apex through the middle and, well, they do find it, but they don't find it with any sort of speed to be able to capitalise. I'm also wondering about this tyre situation, uh, like how much of the life that we're seeing right now is down to us getting simply just getting later on to the evening with that track, track temperature dropping we don't really have any comparison to anyone on fresh tires in that entire field so uh, it's kind of hard to say right now we'll have to see if any teams actually decide to make that call while they're getting their driver swaps done because that would be the best place to do it if any yeah i mean generally you want to say get a full uh, in an endurance race, you get the full service done of driver change, tyres, and fuel. That's what the normal, what the normal uh, route is in terms of uh, an endurance race. This race is a little bit different. It is kind of an endurance race, 70 laps, so it's not the longest race in the world. But it's also not a sprint race either, so that strategy is going to come into play, and it just. It's long enough to make you think, can we make it to the end on one set of tyres? Personally, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, personally, I'm thinking that uh, you've got to take tyres, but that battle for second is heating up here. It is. Fitness racing outside for the Senna S is not able to complete the move this time around. And here comes the uh, Devena eSports car as well. They haven't fallen off the back of this one by any means. Still in there, still poised to be able to challenge. Uh, if the two cars ahead make a bit of a hash of things, shall we say, to see the Delago time, a little bit of a defensive line taken by the Shell V Power car. You see how squirrely that fitness racing car behind them is uh, through that particular section. And now on the run up towards uh, the very fast right-hander of Ferradora. Slight missed apex there from fitness racing. They won't be uh, affected by that one. Uh, too much though so things starting to uh, turn up a little bit here for the battle 
for your final podium positions. And this is just allowing Positive Sim Racing, or in, uh, Positive Sim Racing Porsche, excuse me, to get away five seconds ahead of the rest of the field right now. But Fitness Racing won't be too content about that. They probably think, or, you know, it's, they sort of half half a mind that maybe the race leader is a little bit too far gone. And uh, P2 would still be an absolutely brilliant result. But the thing is, we still have over half the race to go. Anything can happen. Absolutely, yeah, we're nearly reaching the halfway point. We're, uh, what, about 50 minutes into the race now? Uh, so uh, these drivers, they're, uh, they're well and truly in the, uh, the swing of things. Uh, so we've got a driver Ooh. off, and that's the Drivex Esports car. That's on the inside of Junkau. It is, and they're actually trying to reverse it. Hopefully they can find their way back to the track. You don't want to be doing a Kimi Raikkonen in this situation, but here we go. Uh, replay up on screen. What has happened to them? Do they get a bit of rear end contact, or is it a single car mistake? It looks the oh, curve. just lazy, just a lazy spin coming through the exit there. Car breaking away. Uh, I think they got too much, a bit, too much over the curb on the inside there. Completely upset the car, and with about an hour on those tires, you know they're not at their hundred percent best and it's just resulted in what's happened there and you can see how the car behind them got very very close to making contact but they didn't it was just drivex esports spinning of their own accord yep it was nothing that the uh, that the, the other car could do to uh, to um to hit them uh, but uh, we've got a driver change so some early driver yeah. changes happening here and that's for the uh, the 28 grand primo esports uh, car uh, Matthias Machado uh, in the, behind the wheel, and I'm seeing, do they take tyres as well as fuel? Because if they do, no, no, they don't. I don't see the jacks. I didn't so. see the jacks either. Yeah, they would have dropped down off that one. So just fuel and no tyres with the driver change. About 31 seconds they were stationary on the pit lane. Does, so actually, does the uh, does the fuel get done at the same time as the tyres with this car? Um, I believe they don't. Otherwise, we I think we'd be seeing a lot more drivers taking the uh, tires at the same time here. Of course, they're GT3 spec, so you would have thought that they uh, take tires at the same time as well as the rest of the FIA GT3 cars. But these aren't true GT3 cars in the, in the sense that they race in things like the WEC uh, and things like that. This is the Cup spec car, so. Maybe the rules are a little different here and there, but it'll be very interesting to see how the rest of the teams actually respond to that one. And, uh, you know, about 30 seconds to get a driver change in fuel. Uh, there's maybe a little bit of margin you can play with that. Let's have a look. Here comes the Balfour P2, though. Fitness racing around the outside at Furadura of your P2 runners. That's Shell V-Power, but they're holding very strong in this position. The defensive drive from... Gustavo Ariel has been brilliant so far, keeping these guys behind and keeping his team in a good position here. It's been fantastic, but uh, you would expect that of a, of a driver who could, who races in these cars week in, week out. So, um, well, that's his teammate. Oh, sorry, that's his teammate. Yeah, yeah. sorry. But, um, but still, with the effort that they're putting in here, certainly a good display. But we are, what, about six laps away from fuel stops aren't we so uh, we'll see how uh, how we go in terms of strategy and I would imagine because we're coming up to the halfway point of the race as well this will be when you make those uh, driver changes here but again fitness racing putting the pressure on trying to make the move around the outside that's not going to work though not going to work again the defense from the Shell V power car is brilliant uh, we've had the Aguiatech Sim Experience car. They've spun on the pit lane. They spun on the entry to pit lane. That is absolutely ridiculous. We'll keep with the battle, though, for B2 as we just cut to the uh, Sim Experience car. Here comes the battle for B2, though. Shelby Power inside line having to be defended. Here comes Fitness Racing around the outside. Somehow they're able to make it work. Sometimes they have, somehow they have the space to be able to challenge, but they can't complete it at all. Devena Esports now looking to get their way through as well up towards Feradora. Then we have a Griotech Electrons as well out of nowhere have gotten themselves involved in this particular battle as well. All four cars nose to tail coming through turn eight, then into turn nine. 
No room to work with here for either car. We have a bit of a pit party going on as well. It will keep an eye on the strategies in terms of that one as well. But the thing is, with the pit stop cycle in full effect, who out of this pack decides to hit the lane first? Well, the thing is, we know they're definitely going to have to take a short fuel stop at the fine, at the end at some point in this race. Do you do it directly on the halfway point of the race? Take that short stop now and then get your final stop as a full length pit stop. That'll be interesting to see how that goes, but um, uh, with it being a full driver change as well, you take a full stop. It's, it's, yeah, tough. it's difficult. Yeah. We we have had tyres being taken by DriveX Esports, and that only adds about 9 or 10 seconds to your stop time uh, compared to fuel and driver change. So, hmm, this starts to become a little bit more possible here. It definitely gives you that security for the end of the race because we are just going to be... It's going to be the equivalent of a double stint here uh, with about two hours to complete 70 laps here and DriveX Esports will have much healthier tyres throughout the rest of this race now than the rest of the field if everyone else still decides to go for uh, no tyre stops this time around. So they're the first team to decide that tyres are a good idea. We've also had the Agriotech Sim Experience car go for tyres as well. So this is where some teams start to explore their options. Yeah certainly do need to uh, look at how this all pans out now and I think there'll be a few teams keeping an eye on those uh, on those that have taken tyres to see what their lap times are like uh, in comparison to what they were doing at the end of their uh, previous stint on the older tyres to get an idea as to what sort of improvement we could get from those new tyres so we'll have to wait and see how that pans out your race leader by the way 6.7 seconds ahead now they'll just be Strolling away from this battle for second place. Yeah, they have. It's been a pretty convincing one for Positive Sim Racing Porsche. And we're well, starting P3. It wasn't uh, all done in the qualifying. They had to make the passes out there on track. Of course, they were gifted uh, the race lead thanks to the result of the Corinthians Ronaldo car going for a single car slide coming through Ferradora that put them back through the field and they've been trying to recover ever since but it seems like uh, Positive Sim Racing Porsche are taking the race by the horns looking to get the race win at the end of this one but with halfway in this race gone already half to go we see the lights flashing as well that's the Shell V power car uh, deciding to put on a little bit of a light show on the way to the turn 4 position through turn 5 as well that's going to be Interlagos Motorsports that's a lap down car uh, getting themselves well out of the way here and that's one thing we have to start talking about now because uh, lap traffic is going to become very much a thing in this particular race with how long it is and with the separation of times between the top guys and the guys further down the field so it'll be interesting to see how the drivers deal with that as well yeah it's 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 a this is where you see who are the really good drivers and who are the uh, the ones who are just hot lappers um, as I like to say, it's, it's where you get to see that quality uh, come through and how they can manage the traffic and how they're managing the traffic right now is that Fitness Racing and Shell V Power have been able to gap out about a second over the, uh, the drivers behind. So what's gone from being a four car line to is now just a two on two battle. It is. Fitness Racing looking for the move into the center S's. They have the speed down into the corner, but do they have the braking? It looks like they do, but they've overdone it just a bit. Have to push to the exit of the corner. Same with Gel V Power as well. Both battling each other on the brakes and both misjudging it down into turn one. The run goes to the Fitness Racing car. Gets stalled out a little bit by the positioning from that Shell V Power machine. And now Fitness, they can head their way around the outside again at Ferradora to try and wrestle this place away from Shell V Power. Again, they push very wide. Again, they still try to battle. But again, it's not possible for them to make their way through. And up towards Ferradura, it's a little bit of deja vu. It certainly is. And uh, these drivers put it on a great, great show here. And uh, all of a sudden, this is the battle for the lead because your leader in the UI Positive Sim Racing Porsche. They've been on pit road. 31 seconds to stop, so we don't believe that they have taken tyres here. 
but uh, through the gut, through the uh, right hander and down the hill, these guys should be coming onto pit road uh, in the next lap or two. Yeah, they should be able to. Coming through Yun Sao now, everyone stacked up together for P2 with four cars involved immediately in this one. We have a couple of cars further down that might just be having the pace to try and get themselves involved. Here comes Shell V Power. Of course, you never quite know who's going to head down onto the lane here because the racing line cuts across pit entry, and Shell V Power are the only ones from that battle that decide to head their way in. Yeah, so uh, this is the time for them to uh, to make that pit stop. Oh, look, running loose into turn one was that fitness racing snow shattered car and that's going to put them under intense pressure now from behind because Deve uh, Divina uh, they are right there along with the Aguia Tech Electrons car so uh, change of driver Philippe Baptista getting in for Shell V power so all of a sudden the uh, times are changing and now the new drivers the second drivers are coming in this is going to be where we see how teams do as there's a car off the track there. Yeah, just letting them through the blue flags in effect here. Many cars down onto the pit lane, but none of them, at least from my view right now, taking tyres. I will actually pull myself up on that because the Corinthians Viola car has decided to take the tyre stops, uh, tyre uh, option here. And they're taking their sweet time in doing so as well. It's a 46 second stop for them, which isn't exactly ideal, especially when we've seen 40 uh, from the well, other teams that have been taking tyres. Is, is that a case that those that are taking 40 seconds are only taking rear tyres? Maybe. I mean, we've seen some adventurous tyre strategies before. We've <laughs> seen a one tyre stop before, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have in fact seen a one tyre stop before. VRS Planet Sim Sports in the VRS. Uh, Harrison GT World Championship. Yeah, that was at Brands Hatch, I believe. It was, uh, or was that at Nürburgring? I can't quite remember, but I seemingly think it's Brands Hatch. I'm not sure if you were involved in the broadcast of that one, Paul, but... I wasn't, uh, no. Yeah, but it, it did happen. Let's just say that. So two rear tyres? Well, you know, might, might become a thing, but well, fitness the, racing now. With this car, oh. though, that is the tyres that are really going to take the hammering because it's got the weight of the engine over the rear of the car, but it's also with all the acceleration and it's sliding a lot. There's a driver change here. Bruno Rossetto getting in now, so uh, that's the 27 uh, getting ready. So, uh, yeah, I would say if you're going to do a two-tyre stop, it's the rears that you'd want to do. Yeah, it would, and... Uh well, fitness racing, Snow Shatton, they are down on the lane Twen the, for the number 27 car. No tyres being taken, neither for uh, the Shell V-Power car, neither for the uh, Positive Sim Racing Border car. So the front runners not feeling like the tyre strategy is going to fall in their favour if they decide to get fresher rubber on that car. The Grinfin Socrates car also forgoing the tyres, 33 second stop for them. So your current race leader as it is right now because they haven't come down on towards the lane. That's the Ven Devena Esports car uh, from the Agriotech Electrons car, currently P1 and P2. But once they decide to head their way in, well, they will relinquish the race lead back to the uh, UI1 Positive Sim Racing Georgia machine uh, that uh, did not take tires on their previous stop, as I've already mentioned. So here comes Devena Esports. Here comes Agriotech Electrons. That's going to mean the race lead goes back to the Positive Sim Racing Porsche car. Aguiatech very aggressive with the pit entry there. We couldn't quite see it because of the fence, but uh, they were getting the maximum out of the braking zone there uh, into the pit lane. It's one of the fastest pit entries on any motorsport calendar, I believe, so you do have to get it right. I think the uh, one of the only ones that pips it to the post would be the one at uh, Montreal. Uh, I suppose the circuit yeah. Gilles Villeneuve is very, very quick into there, but... Uh, you know, it just is all the more reason to maximise your pit entries. Road America's a quite a quick one as well uh, that you can attack. But uh, anyway, back to this event. We're covering the uh, the Porsche <laughs> Esports Carrera Cup Brazil uh, final. And uh, it's been a great race. But one team that has been absolutely dominant once they actually got out the front is this uh, UI Positive Sim Racing Porsche. Now, let's see how everything pans out. We've got a spin. Oh, Aguiatech. Electrons, race winner in one of the qualifying races. They've had a bit of a spin on pit exit here. That is unfortunate. They get themselves off the line pretty good. The Devena Esports car does 
hit them to the post in terms of getting off the lane, but they just get caught on the curb there. That's such a weird, weird incident, and William Candy, uh, uh, Candio there is going to be really feeling a will of hurt there. He has to basically reverse go, reverse go, try and get that cast button back around the Austin Powers moment, we like to call it, and uh, that's a lot of time lost from the Agriotech Electrons. But look at this. Look at how Devenna and... Ooh. Oh, dear. We, we've had Pumpkin's Viola have a bit of a moment. That was a massive impact there uh, for that 108 car. They were fighting with the Agriotech Sim Experience car. Sim Experience go very wide, try to rejoin the racing circuit. Room wasn't given for them to do so. And that is a huge impact into the... First, the tire barriers, and then the Yamco barriers on the inside as well. That is... Oh, that is a big, big one. So I can understand why the Corinthians Viola car has done that and has taken their racing line because the car has gone off the track. It is solely on the, for me, it is solely on the car returning to the track. I think it's their fault for yeah. that incident. However, if I'm that Corinthians car, even if even though I know I'm in the right and that Ooh, I shall be power, uh, that I have that opportunity as oh dear, yeah, they've taken a bit of rally cross uh, approach there. <laughs> but I know for a fact that if, if, if I've got somebody who's gone wide there at turn number three, I'm giving them space because they are going to be coming returning back to the track and at pace. Yeah, this is Felipe uh, Bas uh, Baptista. That is your real-life Carrera, uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Brazil driver. Uh, going for a little bit of an off-track excursion. Of course, there is an adaption to be made for a lot of the real-life drivers coming into iRacing. You know, it might not iRacing, it is very, very accurate. One, one like the most inaccurate sim that you have uh, here on on the uh, on the sim racing side of things. But you know there are slight differences here and there compared to the real world. It isn't very perfect just yet. But iRacing always working to make sure it gets closer and closer to the real thing. So we'll take a couple of laps here for Gel V Power to get themselves back up to pace because of Baptista behind the wheel. But I think once he finds his, finds his rhythm, then he's going to be uh, particularly. Uh, troublesome for some of the other cars out there on circuit with some of these moves. Yeah, we certainly will be uh, giving a good go up and giving a good show of everything. But um, I tell you what, um, it's there's one thing that you can't simulate, unfortunately, um, on these simulators, and that's the G forces that yeah. happen in the car and uh, and the feel from the seat of your pants. That's that's the one thing that is missing. You can get these motion rigs and you can get the uh, these butt kickers and things like that. Devano Esports. Yeah. Oh, they get a bit of a moment through the center S's and now Fritness Racing uh, can look to make the move off the curb. So sorry to cut you off no, there, but they got for a little, gone for a little bit of an off-track excursion. Here comes the run though uh, for Fitness Racing down into the Decida de Lago Battle of the Light Breakers. Devena Esports got the best of them in that situation, but they have the slower line for the inside of the corner. But Fitness Racing can't capitalize uh, on that fact. As that is uh, that is twice now in very quick succession we've seen new drivers in the car actually have a problem with the tenor S's. So is this a uh, an adaption issue to how the track is running right now with the rubber that's laid down and with uh, how far into the evening we've gone? If, if you think about it this way, when you're in practice and you're uh, practicing for this race, you get new tyres when, you, when you're coming yeah. out the pit. You've not practiced after having uh, a full stint um, done on these uh, on these tyres, so that <laughs> it, because they're not taking tyres and here's the change of second place. Oh, and the fitness... Racing Snow Shatton, they're going to hold that inside line, but they're not going to get the run out the corner. But they park it on the apex beautifully to slow down that Devena car. And that's second place for them there. But the point I was making is they've not, they've not practiced with worn tyres in these conditions. They haven't. And, uh, well, I'm just having a look at the lap time for drivers that, and teams that did take tyres. And it doesn't look like they're getting all that much benefit out of them, it has to be argued. Uh, well, just as I say that the DriveX Esports car set their fastest uh, lap, or, well, not their fastest lap in the entirety of the race, but their fastest lap of anyone that time around with a 134.551. And when you compare that to a 137, uh, well, we're not going to pay attention to these guys, but pay attention to the race leader who did a 135.5 last time. The fresh tyres looks like they only give you about a second lap, so... 
uh, may or may, may not really be worth it in this situation. Of course, we won't know in terms of these front runners because it seems like everyone, uh, you know, went for okay, let's let these get these tires all the way to the end. Uh, it's mostly mid pack runners that have uh, taken the tires here, so. Um, I don't think it will affect things at the front here too much unless uh, one of these teams decide to pull a fast one uh, coming towards the end of the race, but I don't think that one's going to happen. No, not when you're considering about a 15 second pit stop yeah. for, uh, for fuel. Uh, they, they, they won't risk it. Really, the, the only opportunity they had of making a, a tyre stop work was in that pit stop with the driver changes. We've got changes of position happening further down. That's Euphoria driving scalpers out of Corinthians Rival, uh, Rivalino, sorry. And uh, they have made that set position up into 11th for them. Uh, so uh, driving scalpers start at 19th. They've been marching forward here. Yeah, they have. Continuing on their good run of form from the uh, first half of this race, getting themselves up into the position that they are in right now. Just on the outside, bordering the top 10, but the car that's further down the road is about 10 seconds uh, down the road. So it's uh, it's going to be a lonely one for Euphoria Drive X Scalpers uh, as they try to pull away from the Corinthians uh, Revolino car. And here's the Grande Primo 28 and the Drive X Sports car, though. Uh, so both Drive X cars getting themselves involved in a bit of a scrap here. Well, there's three oh, of them in oh, this entire field. Shell big power. Inch, big oh. instant. That's the Vena Esports. The Vena Esports there. Very big incident it seems, and it's all alone on the bricks into the Decida De Lago rear locking spears them into the inside Armco barrier. That is a huge boom impact, and then no one else collected. But the Vena Esports single car incident. Puts them out of contention for a podium position now. Yeah, that really does. They tried to hold that slipstream of the car in front, hit the brakes. And there's some rear tyres locking up. We've seen a few people locking up the rears on the downshift. It's easily done with this car. And uh, once again, they're away. But you can see all the damage to the front of their car, the front left hand side of the car. That is going to be causing the major issues for the rest of this race, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them dropping back into the grasps of the uh, Corinthians Ronaldo team. Well, I guess in these cars it's better to hit the wall with the front rather than the rear, uh, ah, the <laughs> if you're going to hit the wall at all. The front's got the radiator in there. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but, you know, engine damage and racing is... I believe a bit of a bigger factor. You don't see, at least on the roadside, many engines get blown from overheating. Uh, with damage, but in some cars it is a, a bit of a, a bigger problem, shall we say. Keeping our eyes on the number 18 machine, though, that one's going to be the Corinthians Rivolino car versus Euphoria Drive X Scalpers. They get a very good run uh, through the uh, Aquabancadas, and now inside line for the CNRSs for Corinthians Rivolino. Able to get the pass complete, and before we drive at scalpers, they can't get any reply in just yet. They'll have a good run through the Curva del Sol, but I think that's all they are going to get here. They have a little bit of front end damage. It's torn up a little bit, not a huge amount, but something that will be affecting them. They can still be very competitive in the slipstream though. Yeah, if you can hold that slipstream, it just helps pull you along, especially around this track. As I mentioned in qualifying, the first and third sectors, all about that top speed. This middle sector, it's uh, it's that um, tight and twisty nature where you want the mechanical grip of this car, and that's exactly what uh, what you want to uh, have here. And this is what that Corinthians Rivolino car is getting at the moment. And uh, we we expect, we think that they're one of the teams that have taken tyres, but certainly would appear that way with the time spent on the plane. And uh, they are pulling away from that to drive it, euphoria drive it scalpers car. So I would say that those tyres are helping, but I don't think it's the it's the leaping performance that they would have wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's the main thing for a lot of the teams that have taken tyres. They're not really getting the uh, the speed out of them required. We have had the Porsche Imperio GT3 Cup official YouTube channel say very great uh, great stream in our stream chat thank you very much for even putting this event on it's uh, insane the amount of things Porsche are doing 
in the sim racing and in the esports world as well. And uh, it's, uh, you know, with the first year of this sort of initiative going on, uh, it looks pretty bright from a lot of the uh, talent that's out there on circuit, a lot of the events that are going to go on as well, as well as the events previous. Definitely looking forward to it, but what I'm looking forward to is this battle as well. E16 in play for this one. Track Friends Racing versus Interlagos versus Fitness Racing 14 here in this particular trio. And they have a bit of lap traffic ahead to contend with as well, which hopefully will get out of the way in rather rapid fashion. They do off of the pit exit. And here they come in towards the Decida de Lago. So your battles at the front of the field here at this stage, uh, Paul, have fizzled out a little bit. Hopefully we'll get them back by the time this race is done, but the mid-pack seems to be where it's at. Yeah, and uh, this is why we're showing you it, is uh, where these guys... Well, this is the interesting thing. The car that we're on board is now 12 laps in their stint. The car behind is on 12 laps in the stint, whereas the Track Friends Racing in the 269 that we're looking at, the car that we're attacking, only on lap 8 of their stint. So they'll have a little bit of different fuel loads. It won't be affecting the car in terms of speed that much, although a missed apex there for the 269. Oh, no! Big, big impact there. Track friends racing, make friends with the Armco barrier instead. We'll get it up on the replay for you now. It was a bit of a lazy spin out of turn 10. Uh, sent them into the barriers here. They do collect the Interlagos car uh, in that one. You just see huge impact there and the uh, door shut with the barrier on the outside of the corner as well. That is a horrible, horrible moment there for the Track Friends Racing car, and they will pull it down onto pit lane. They'll actually take the toe to pit lane, so that is their race for all intents and purposes done. And again, it's another single car spin that spells the end of a team. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We were looking forward to that, actually. That's going to give us some uh, promising, some good racing there, but unfortunately, a little mistake there, and uh, they go around. Nothing the Interlagos team could do there either. They, they were just in some party in that one, unfortunately, for them. And they've ended up losing position to the uh, fitness racing uh, snow shack number 14 car. Uh, Corinthians Ronaldo, they have made their way past uh, Devena Esports. So I said that I uh, imagine that they would lose the position to them. They've now got seven and a half seconds between them and Euphoria Drive X3M. If I was the uh, the team boss of that uh, 219 car, I'd be getting onto the uh, onto the blower, onto the radio, and saying, "Right, that guy's slower. Get him. <laughs> Just go get him. There we go. That's, that's what we have to do." And uh, we'll see if that does indeed happen before the end of the race. We have. Uh, about 21, 22 laps to go here. We can see the lap times being reeled in there uh, by the Euphoria Drive X uh, 3M car uh, over Devena Racing. And uh, Devena carrying quite a bit of damage as a result of their incident a little bit earlier on. It's uh, just a case of maybe that for them trying to remain inside of this top 10 would still be a good finish considering what has happened to them throughout this race but euphoria though even though they're trying to track a car down that's a couple of seconds down the road they still have to be very concerned uh with srb racing here because on that last lap they're about a tenth of a second faster with srb so euphoria i think they have to deal with the more imminent issue rather than go chasing after someone yeah absolutely i mean you can look at the positions gained there euphoria drive x 14 places gained the stars at 21st in this race they're now seventh that just goes to show what a race they've had. Uh, the rest of your uh, movers there on the side of your screen. A couple of teams gaining 10 positions into Larkos and also Grand Prix of Esports, the 96 car. And big losers, of course. Cars that are out of the race there. Bravus, not the day, and they did end up parking that car. We have got. Um, officially for retirements but there is another car that spent 32 minutes on the pit lane so I think it's safe to say there's five retirements for the race. Yep, five teams out out of 30. Still an okay rate of attrition here in this one especially with uh, how calm actually that first uh, portion of the race was. We had that big instant on lap one into the center S's but apart from that 
Uh, it seems to be relatively calm in terms of the car-to-car -car contact throughout this race. We have seen a lot, and I mean a lot, of single-car incidents, though, with uh, spins into corners, spins out of corners, uh, with the tyres going away. But here comes Drivex Esports then inside line on Euphoria. Drivex Scalper's car, and that's an easy move done into turn four that time. So working their way back up to the field are our Drivex Esports. Started P7, now up into P12. Of course, they've been in the wars as well throughout the, this race and on a recovery drive by any means. But with about 20 laps to go, top 10 could, could be a thing. The potential's there. It's quite a big gap though once you get past, if you get past 11th place, there's eight and a half seconds between 11th and 10th. Uh, which considering all the, all the action that was happening around the Brandt car, it's actually in 10th place. It's, it's great to see them up there. They're kind of on the run, six and a half seconds behind the next car up the road, but doing a good job. Top 10. That's, uh, that's not bad considering all the action that's been happening around them. Speaking of action, these two cannot be separated at the moment. SRB and Euphoria Drive X. Yeah, very close between them. We've already seen inklings of a battle between these two teams, but nothing has come to absolute fruition just yet between these two and uh, we'll have to see if that continues to be the theme or if things start to get pretty spicy between these two uh, uh flavio xavier in that srb racing car trying to chase down uh, moises uh, carballo in the euphoria car up towards ferradura up towards curva de la Randina, and of course turn eight as well of course, I'm going to butcher these names of corners and of drivers. It's just what I do. I do apologize for that. But uh, SRB looking pretty competitive at this stage. They took another half a tenth of a second out of Euphoria last time around. And, you know, with this, how tight this first, well, how tight this middle complex is with how wide the entries are, which really does invite dives down the inside. I don't think we're going to see any of it just yet. But when it comes to the last 10 lap, last five laps, that's when teams start to get a little bit more desperate to make those moves work. Yeah, they do as we're uh, 19 to go now. Race lead up across the line. And uh, we're heading towards the closing stages of this race. And as you mentioned, here, here comes go. the move. And he's done it one way and the other. Down the inside. And that's going to be position gained, is it? Although the 219 is trying to hold it around the outside. Oh, they do a fantastic job, but can they complete the defense? Nope, they can't. They just have to slot in line for the Curva del Sol, and they'll have perhaps another opportunity here to try and get themselves back past, but they're not even sitting in the slipstream here. They're just sitting in the clear air that's being left by SRB Racing. I would have done a more of a IndyCar move and tried to follow in the slipstream as that SRB Racing car tried to break the draft, and not really all that aggressive there from Euphoria Drivex to try and wrestle that position back. They've done a good job making up positions so far this race uh, with how many positions that they have gained uh, throughout it. It's, well, now down to 13, but 13 still a very impressive number indeed. Of course, we do have to consider that we have one more stop here to go, at least scheduled stop, for a little bit of a splash and dash for fuel at the end of this race, which might just change things inside of this top six, top seven cars because they do seem to be rather spread out. But if there are slight differences on the field here and there, some drive, some teams that have been able to save a little bit more, then maybe those guys will get a little bit closer together when all is said and done. But we're just waiting for that moment now. They're going to come across the line, 18 laps to go. And uh, it's going to be UI1 Positive Sim Racing Orange. They have led the way from pretty much a quarter of the way into the race up until now. After the Corinthians Ronaldo car had an issue up towards Ferradura, they've just extended the gap up to 6.5 seconds. There's the gap visually up on your screen, all the way back to the Fitness Racing Snow Shatten 27 car, who is actually going very, very quickly. It's a 134.762 for them last time around, which is the fastest lap time of anyone that, or that time around. And they took a healthy chunk of time out of the UI1 Positive Sim Racing car. They actually took about three and a half tenths of a second out of them. So. It might be too little too late, but with how pit stops, how we have to do that final pit stop, it's uh, a low percentage chance of fitness racing getting themselves in a the position to take the race lead here, but it's not impossible. No, it's not impossible. One little mistake here or 
getting caught up behind that traffic there and before you know it that gap has come right down and when that gap if a gap suddenly starts uh, reducing at a fair rate the, the, the tension the anxiety comes up and that's when you start making mistakes and before you know it that car's right behind you putting all manner of pressure on you so uh, as you can see gained about five about tenths of a second over the last three laps it's not enough but as they actually come onto pit road uh well somebody's coming oh, to pit road because there was a blown engine yeah it was a lapped car i believe that decided to head away in it's the grande primo 44 I'm sure uh, we've got a blown engine on pit road. In. We might just have. It's one of the cars that's uh, stopped ahead. In fact, it's the fitness racing uh, snow shattered car that's been sat there for about half an hour. Ah, okay. Yeah, it does happen, of course. You do have the ability in our racing now to turn the ignition, so just turn that engine off when you tow it down in. It'll save you an engine rebuild. But thankfully, this isn't the real world. No one has to pay for that. So um, it just gives us a little bit of uh, smoky action on the pit lane, shall we say that. Closest battle out there on track, though, SRB Euphoria Drive X has been for the last while. But it looks like Euphoria, I think they've run out of steam a little bit here. SRB Racing have been able to pull out the gap here. 134.8 that last time around, which is on the pace of your race leaders. So they're yeah, finding a bit of a second win here. SRB Racing, able to pull out the gap. Battle for, you know, P15, P16 as well. Well, they'll decide to head their way down to the pit lane for their final stop. So the pit uh, window is open here with about 16 laps remaining. Yep, so battle going to the pit lane. It's the battle of who can stop on their marks correctly uh, because that does affect things in terms of uh, the, the length of pit stop. Just like it does in real life, if you don't stop on your marks properly, and it does cost you uh, time on pit road, but the uh, the Luperi, uh, the Interlagos car goes, and now the Fitness Racing uh, Snow Shatter car goes. They're actually spread out a little bit after that pit stop because an eight, eight tenths longer pit stop for the number 14 car. It was very marginal, but all those little gaps do add up at the end of a race, of course. Out of the pit lane, they decide to head, flashing the lights ahead of them. That's going to be uh, the car of the Fitness Racing uh, Snow Shatten car for P2. Flashing the lights because there's a bit of a lap, uh, well, piece of lap traffic ahead of them in, that, in the form of that Interlagos Motorsports AB machine who will get out of the way on the way up to Veradora, but again, it was a very fast lap time that uh, that time from fitness racing. They actually take almost a second out of your race leaders. So that is a positive sign. But when you consider on the lap previous, they lost two and a half tenths of a second. It looks less good, but um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's still uh, looking pretty good. Actually, I will take that back. It was one and a half tenths of a second rather than one second. That's my mistake. I completely blew it. There we go. Yeah, the decimal point is in front of the one. That's uh, that's all points are hard, giveaway. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the giveaway there, but um, yeah, it's it's not been enough really. Uh, I, I think the fact that there was there was that hard battling with the Shell V power car for so long really did act yeah. as a detrimental uh, point for uh, for these guys wanting the challenge for the lead and. And that UI positive sim racing car right now just has to manage that lead. That's all they have to do here in this race. And that's exactly what they're doing in this race because they've just taken another tenth, um, extended that gap by a tenth of a second on that last lap. Here we have uh, Luperoni, uh, Luperonini racing. That's the number 100. Down in for their final stop. They actually do rev that car off of the pit stall. Uh, quite in, in quite an aggressive manner, just spinning the wheels out, trying to get up to pit lane speed as fast as possible. Here's the Corinthian Socrates and the Euphoria Drivex car. So Euphoria Drivex is going to be on the defense this year. Defense coming through the Curva del Sol here. That's going to be a bit of a problem for them. Here comes the run from Corinthian Socrates. Thiago Casera behind the wheel of the 69. Inside line taken for the Desio de Lago. Not really committing to the move though. Euphoria though. Taking the middle of the road, outside. Oh, they have to hold the outside now for turn five. Corinthian Socrates, surprise move down the inside at the fast left-hander, and they're able to 
get the move complete. That was well worked there for Corinthian Socrates. The lapped car just taking to the runoff area to let these guys go through. But uh, Casera, he made that move work as when I perhaps I thought he was just going to bail out and stay behind. Picked his moment, easy run out of the Decia de Lago through turn five, pass complete. Yeah, here it is again, then we'll have a look at that. So he's, he's looking to the inside, breaks that little bit earlier, but causes that uh, 2 and 9 to miss the apex, run that bit wide. That Astro Turf is really slippy, and thank you very much. I will take that eighth place away from you. Yeah, very, very well worked pass there from Gisela. You know, it's, it's more of a more of a strategy-based pass rather than a... Uh, a aggressive pass where you just throw it down the inside and hope it works. It's very, very calculated the way he did that. So uh, I called it as non-committal coming down into turn four, but that was, there was a reason for that. We've had problems for the 88 car. That's the sub-racing yellow car that spun through the Senna S's here. No one else involved in this one. Again, it's a bit of a problem on entry. Not getting that car slowed down enough. We'll see it up on the replay for you once they head, hit their way, head their way to the end of this pit strip. Yeah, you can see the damage that's on that car already. So they've been in the wars. There's this 88. They're just trying to make it to the end of this race. And we'll see them uh, come onto the brakes, hit the brakes, turn in. And then all of a sudden that car, yeah, it doesn't want to stop. <laughs> and around they go. Oh, yep. lucky for the SRB yeah. car there, actually. And that, of course, is a car in seventh place. Yeah, they got away with it there, avoiding the car spun right in the middle of the racing circuit. There is your race leader, Positive Sim Racing Porsche. Fantastic drive for them so far in this race. They decide to head their way in down onto the pit lane for their final stop here. Important not to make a mistake on this one because if they miss their pit box, then that might just give the margin that fitness racing needs uh, to be able to challenge right at the end of this race. So uh, Vieira, get that car stopped in his pit box. Looks relatively okay to me. Absolutely perfect. Waiting for that fuel to go in and uh, he'll get on back, get back out there on circuit in a couple of seconds time. 10 seconds stationary on the pit lane, 12 seconds. And that's going to be him between the green cones. He has a couple of other friends on pit lane as well. Corinthians Ronaldo, Shell V-Power deciding to head the way and see it with SRB and Euphoria Drive X3M. So this is where the front, run front runners decide to come in and take their final stops. Yep, 13 to go on this race. So uh, plenty of time uh, just to calmly get your pit stops done and uh, get out and away. Now, Fitness Racing, Snow Shatton, they need to have a good couple of laps here if to, if the, to have any any hope of trying to uh, to gain a win here or at least challenging then they need to have a good couple of in laps here because they're on lap 18 of their stints you can go to lap 19 20 so really they need to push and push hard and try and get those uh, those laps of the gods to happen right here in this one Yep, that is exactly what is required. Gap stands at, uh, well, if you're looking at the I1 Positive Sim Racing Porsche, currently it's uh, three seconds back to Socrates, but the thing is, of course, they haven't decided to head their way down to pit lane just yet, so in a way, Positive Sim Racing Porsche are in a little bit of no man's land right now. But as we see the fitness racing car decide to head their way in, we'll get a more representative idea of what the gap is between themselves and your race leaders of the Positive Sim Racing Porsche car. Fitness racing stopped in their box. Of course, qualified P2, second garage for them. And uh, waiting for that fuel to go in once again. Keep an eye on the stop times here. There's the Porsche, uh, the the, uh, excuse me, the positive sim racing Porsche car deciding to head their way through. Fitness Racing Snow Shatton, though, it is a pretty quick stop for them. It was about two seconds faster than the UI1 positive sim racing Porsche was able to do. It's 10.3 seconds on the stop. So that is that looks promising, but it's, st it's still a relatively big gap for them uh, to try and overcome. It's four seconds right now. Four seconds, 12 laps. It requires a monumental effort. It does, but that gap has gone down from being six and a half seconds. Yeah. So the, it does help. It gives you hope. I just hope that that 27 car has put enough fuel into the end of the race here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they do have the shortest stop time of anyone who's come in so far. So, 
you know, could be a little bit of a concern, but uh, hopefully for them, they do have the mileage to get themselves to the end of the race. Not just the mileage, and uh, but potential performance in that car to try and challenge the positive sim racing Porsche car at the end of this event. We're still waiting for two cars to decide to head their way in. That's with Tech Electrons and Devena Esports uh, that have not pitted just yet. And uh, they'll actually continue on their way. Another lap here, perhaps. Nope, that's with Tech Electrons in. And same with Devena Esports. They'll angle towards the pit lane. So that is going to be your entire field having completed their, their final stops of the race. So every gap out there on circuit now is representative. You have to make that up on track. P8, P9, Corinthian Socrates, and uh, Euphoria Drive X3M. Oh, a bit of flattered the curbing there at Chunkau. Up the hill. And that's just cost them a little bit of time there, but they'll get that slipstream and it'll pull themselves further forward. So this is the closest battle on track for 8th place for the moment. Euphoria Drive X is just too far behind That's for the time being. Yes, they are into the center S's. Well, we're not going to get representative lap times this time around because Corinthian Socrates came down in last time around. So, but we can talk about Euphoria Drive X 136 flat. That's uh, rather average when it comes to the lap times uh, that the rest of the teams have been setting here. So it's not oh. entirely all that special. Corinthian Socrates, they're out. What on earth happened they're there? They're out. I have no idea. They straight lined the Decida de Lago and then it says Thiago Cicera manually disconnected. So, oof. That is that is concerning. I'm, I'm just going to have a look at the I, wheel inputs I'm because say, that usually tells us. I don't know if it was some sort of hardware failure or something. But no. Yeah, that car just suddenly just pulls off to the right and that's it. They're out the race. That is such a shame for that Corinthian Socrates car. They were having a pretty good race up until that point and with uh, coming up to 10 laps to go to have something like that happen that is absolutely heartbreaking for the Corinthian Socrates uh, team. Uh, but the Corinthians team in general still are on for a pretty decent finish here with their Ronaldo car now up into fifth, uh, into fifth place. But we are also keeping an eye on this gap between the race leaders and P2 there. And Fitness Racing Slow Shatton, well, it was a, w one of the most marginal gains you can get on that last lap, two thousandths of a second. but. It's the, yeah, that's, I think it's an understatement to say that's not enough. Yeah. Re really? Really, Sherlock? Yeah, um, I know. I know, it's, right? <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a tall order. Let's, uh, let's say that at this moment in time, they're not really gaining what they need to here for the time being. But it's a good effort. They've brought it to within four seconds now. So uh, they've certainly given it a go up and trying to give us a, a race to the end. And, uh, well, you never, you never say never in motorsport. Mm. If is the biggest word in motorsport. <laughs> and uh, if only things happened. And uh, that's, that's certainly what they may be thinking right now. Still, we'll look back because 12th place, 11th from 12th place, they're pretty much the closest battle on track at the moment. Corinthians, Rivellino and Euphoria Drive X Scalpers. Yes, they are. Battle for P11, this one. Both teams haven't gained a pretty good amount of positions in this race so far, but they'll have to scrap between themselves if they want to get a better stat line at the end of this race. You just see how that track has darkened over the course of the race, not just in terms of the light levels, but because of the rubber that's been laid down as well. Of course, that rubber does get discarded as it flies off the tires and off the track on towards the outside of the track, which means those outside lines, very treacherous at this late point in the race so if there are any side-by-side -side battles inside of the final nine laps that's what the drivers and teams do have to consider if they decide to take alternate lines through these corners uh, we do have a close battle sort of closing up that's going to be a great take electrons and Crimson's ronaldo for p4 so that's a little bit further down the field than this one so that's another one to consider as well we do have fitness racing they have closed the gap a little bit up to race leader but we've already mentioned that this not going to happen i don't think without any outside influence so it looks like the highest position battle that we'll get to call at the end of the race will be this one for p4 between the electrons and corinthians ronaldo have you seen the lap times of the first two 
So what before two thousandths of a second could this race in Snow Shackle were this last time by UI Positive Sim Racing were three thousandths of a second faster. <laughs> so in, in two laps, the difference was one thousandth of a second in the leader's favour. That is absolutely crazy. Both teams putting in some fantastic laps here to make sure that, uh, well, at least for fitness racing that they can challenge and for Positive Sim Racing Porsche that they secure the race win when all is said and done, but still undecided here for P4 out there on circuit, Un undecided for P11 as well, which is the other battle that we have going on. On board with that Corinthians Ronaldo car, Jeff Giassi behind the wheel of this one. And they get a good run through these NRSs and they could capitalize on this one, but is grip limited coming through the Curva del Sol, so you do have to slow that car down a little bit more. And now Corinthians Ronaldo, defensive inside line from Aguirre Tech, returns back to the racing line, swapping of lanes down in towards the Decida de Lago, but everything is okay, at least in FIA terms, as long as it's not the braking zone. And now Corinthians Ronaldo, and they make this position up right at the end of this race. Seven and a half laps to go for them and they can get themselves inside the top four, but they do slightly at this stage miss out on the podium and the chance to go to that uh, final event of the season and trying to receive the, and receiving their trophy for finishing on the podium. Won't happen for them unless something cataclysmic happens at the front, but Corinthians Ronaldo down the inside then, Pico uh, Zapato then, turn 10, up all over the curb there for Jeff Giazzi as he tries to challenge Candido coming through turn 11 of Magulo up towards Yunsao now all over the place is a great attack but they managed to hold position coming through the final corner. This is great battle in here and uh, great to see the respect between the two as well. Racing room given both by both sets of drivers so uh, these two battling it out for this fourth place seven laps to go in this race so time is running out and uh, into the center S we go. Will that move? Stake his back, put his nose oh. there. <laughs> oh, can he make it work? Corinthians Ronaldo. Oh, there's a bit of door barging through the curve and so the great attack electrons will be fallen foul to that one as they get shoved out coming through that particular corner. They lost a lot of time as a result as well, but we will get the replay up. Committed move there for Corinthians Ronaldo. They almost make the pass complete. They do make the pass complete, but look at that. Door shoving through the apex of the corner. Corinthians Ronaldo, though, I think might just get the eye of the stewards here because Aguirre can say that Corinthians Ronaldo had all four tires across that white line on the inside there, unless, at least in British racing terms, you count the curb as part of the racing circuit. So that one's going to be particularly contentious, Paul. I, I think that's just a... Unfortunate, that's a racing incident for me. It's um, door panel to door panel. Yeah, let's carry on. It's 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 hard racing. The, yeah. the drivers had been showing some good uh, race uh, race awareness as well between the two of them before that. So I think it was just unfortunate that that did come together right there. Oh, so I would give it that. They are around number 77 team, so things go from bad to worse for them. Of course, they'll be carrying a little bit of left side damage as a result of that contact and coming in towards Yun Sao. Exit of the corner. Going to be trying to get the power down. We'll get it up on your screen. There we go. This portion of the corner sliding out. And as you said, uh, you know, earlier on in the broadcast, Paul, once that Porsche gets the back end out past a certain point, then the momentum just carries it around with how much weight is back there. Yeah, it does. And uh, well, now they find themselves behind the Devenna Esports car. So uh, Devena not falling back as far as uh, they could have done uh, with that damage to the front of their car. They have been hampered in terms of their lap times. This our B actually. They're in the background there in the white car, the white and blue car. They're, uh, they're sniffing a co possible couple positions here. They could see a top five finish coming uh, for them. It's absolutely gorgeous sunset here uh, in Lagos as they come in through Ferradura. But for the time being, that Aguirre Tech Electron's car just having to hold behind and hold station, just calm themselves down after that those couple of incidents on the last lap. Yeah, they do just have to calm the nerves, take a couple of deep breaths, try and relax and try and complete 
the final six laps of this race. But through turn 10 and up towards turn 11, you can see the damage to the front end of that Devena Esports car. That's going to be hampering them in terms of, one, the balance of the car through those high-speed corners and, of course, the straight-line speed because the huge amount of drag that the un-aerodynamic damage uh, causes. We'll see that from Aguiatech as they sit in the slipstream and able to use their straight-line speed advantage that they have here. They're going to go for the move into the center. Can they complete it even before the braking zone is the issue here as the headlights turn on for absolutely everyone inside the final five laps here. Aguiatech, have they made the pass complete? They need to make the corner, and they do so. So that is the pass done there by Aguiatech Electrons. And now we have to look further forward because Gel Fee Power now have been... Uh, being caught by Prince Ronaldo is a horrible lap that last time around from Zell Vipo and now P3 is under threat. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the crucial one, the podium. Do you want that uh, that little trip? Do you fancy it? Well, uh, Prince <laughs> Ronaldo, after, uh, after starting on pole position, it's been a bit of a nightmare for them after that error that they made, but... There can be a little bit of redemption here, but I don't think they'll be too pleased with themselves uh, uh, in this event. But uh, those two coming through, picking the pat up, and uh, through the left hand and out towards uh, Junkau. Onto the brakes, and we're going to be starting four to go very shortly. The lead battle is still about three and a half seconds, so that's uh, just stayed as it was but this is this one and the uh, battle for fifth place is where it is, the action is at the moment I'll keep an eye further down as well there is battling uh, further in your pack but we'll keep an eye on this one because this is the important one it's for the podium yeah it is the only problem for your race leader might be the decent amount of traffic ahead of them right now that have to work their way through but the same would be the case for P2 as well so uh, it's, it'll affect both cars, but in how much uh, how much would it affect both cars is the big issue. But yeah, for P3 is where the main, main battle is going to be for now. Shell V-Power trying to hold on. They've been seemingly involved in a lot of defending here so far this race, especially inside that opening half of the race where they were uh, holding position quite admirably to a train of cars behind them uh, for P2. They'll have to do so again, this time with only one car involved. That's the Corinthians Ronaldo car, but it is a car that has been on a recovery drive throughout the entirety of this race. And a podium finish here for Corinthians Ronaldo. I think they'll take that. They'll be hard done by by not winning this race after starting pole position. But P3, a very respectable finish. Gets them the chance to go to that event in November as well to receive their prize. Jeff Giassi, though, is going to have to be the man to do it here for the Corinthians team. Felipe Baptista, though, in that Shell V-Power car. Real life experience in that number 30 is going to pay dividends here. He's been in this situation before in this real life racing side of things. We see a battle though further back. That's for P15, 16. That's going to be the fitness racing snow shatter car deciding to head their way through perhaps on the Interlagos Motorsports car. Interlagos on the outside line for the center S's and fitness racing in their 14. Well, they have decided to head their way through. A Guiatech MV pack here on the back of this one could be a factor as well. But. That's just going to calm down a little bit for now. There is your battle for P3, though. Shell V-Power versus Corinthians Ronaldo. That's a good run for Jeff Giassi through the Senna S's. And now we can sit in the slipstream all the way down to the Desio de Lago. Huge amount of track exit being used from Baptista there coming through turn three up towards four. Now he'll feel a little bit safe. Uh, Corinthians Ronaldo not close enough to be able to make this move work. But with coming up to about three, well two and a half laps to go, for these guys, this is it now. This is going to be everything on the line. Yeah, they will uh, certainly look. I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe have a look into the inside of this corner. Not this lap, but maybe the next lap or the final lap. Have a look into the inside of that corner. You can make dives down there and make it work, but it's a bit of a, uh, a cooperation manoeuvre. Same at this corner. You can make the moves into here as well. Pick a tapato. But uh, through that right hander, through the left, your favourite point is to get the really good run out of this next corner, Jukau, to get that run all the way up the start, up this hill. Because you've got to carry that speed up the hill here. You need as much acceleration out the bottom there 
because it's such a steep hill. But we're going to have two to go. Time is running out for these two here. And uh, right now, if I'm Philippe Baptista, I'm just praying for that checkered flag. Hoping and praying, but there's still two laps across the line to go as Corinthians Ronaldo look for the inside. That's a very long way back. It's more of a scare for Shell V Power. Corinthians will have the line coming through the center S's. They can't capitalize. They had such a good run, but Shell V Power have been putting their car in all of the right places. Instantly defensive on the way down to the Decida de Lago. Giassi has to make a decision. There's a lane left on the inside there for him to head his way through. And he does, but does he hold position? Here comes Batista then, back on the inside, coming through turn five. Can he wrestle the position back? Can he wrestle the podium back away from Jeff Giassi? The answer for now looks to be yes, but Giassi's fighting for all he's worth, and he's holding the inside here through the right-handers. Another tighter one to go of turn eight, and that's Corinthians Ronaldo through. But Batista, he isn't done. He searches for a line through the Penarino, but that is going to be the pass done there by Corinthians Ronaldo. Fantastic stuff, but it isn't done. There's the huge send from Baptista down the inside at turn 10. They're going to rub doors off the corner and Shell V Power are back through within two laps. What amazing action here. It's not done yet. Oh, oh. contact between the two. No, it's getting a bit angry now. Oh, that, um, that was very cheeky. Was that from Corinthians? And uh, I think Shell V Power, they will not be happy there. By the way, we're on to the done. final lap now. And this is, yeah, this isn't done. But there is damage to the side of that Shell V Pire. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of damage to the Corinthians Ronaldo car. White flag out there. So one more lap for positive sim racing Porsche to be able to take the race win here. Here comes Shell V Power back on the outside of the start of the center S's. Can't commit to the move. They'll have the slightly better line coming through the center S's, but they can't capitalize. So that's one threat gone away here for Corinthians Ronaldo. So they can say that but perhaps they have a little bit of a better percentage chance of finishing on the podium here today. On the way down to the Cedar de Lago, Batista not in a position to be able to challenge in this situation. He needs the monster of a middle sector if he's going to have a chance at making this pass complete uh, before the end of this lap. UI1 positive sim racing pause though for the race lead. They have gotten past the traffic in relatively safe fashion. They haven't lost the time required for fitness racing to be on the back of them. So a couple more corners to go now for them and they can take the race win here in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Brazil. Just one more actual corner to go and then a couple of easy left-handers and it's a run to the line now for Positive Sim Racing Porsche. From P3 on the grid, they were hounding your race leader. Your race leader made a mistake and it's Positive Sim Racing Porsche to capitalize on everything. Checkered flag out and Positive Sim Racing Porsche will win here at Interlagos for the Porsche Esports what's Carrera Cup Brazil. We have a look back to P3 because Corinthians Ronaldo through the last two lap passes that they've done, they've been able to make it a podium finish. It was whole position for them, but they were the team that spun right in front of the Positive Sim Racing Porsche car and gifted them the race win. But you can just see how happy Jif Yassi is about that as he spins towards the exit of turn one. Everyone flashing their lights across the line. What an impressive race from all involved. And this one isn't done by the way. Revoluno, Corinthians Revoluno putting the pressure on Brandt Racing to the end here. This is for ninth place. Can they get the run across the line? It's not enough across the line there. But wow, half a tenth between the two of them there. That's, uh, that's great stuff from them. We've got the final couple of cars making their way through. But what an end to that race. That was a fantastic finish there. And uh, what a great event this has been as well. Worthy winners, but what a battle there for an entire lap working side by side with each other. Corinthians and Shell V Power. Brilliant stuff. I loved that. That was absolutely incredible. You can just see how much uh, podium position means for both of those teams, both of those drivers as well. But it's Jeff Giesi for Corinthians that wins out in that one. P3 for them. And we'll get the official race results up on your screen for you now.
It's UI1 Positive Sim Racing Porsche that take the race win by 3.5 seconds. That gap did fluctuate in and out, but the overall trend was out as Positive Sim Racing Porsche pull away from the rest of the field. Fitness Racing Snow Shatton, though, started P2. That's exactly where they finish. They'll be receiving their prize in November as well on that podium of the Porsche Esports Porsche Carrera Cup Brazil. We've got Corinthians Ronaldo. They'll join them at their event as well. P3 for them. Shell V Power. Oh, what could have been? They were in battles all day at the front of the field, but they miss out by one position and arguably two laps as well, where they could have held position. They finish in P4. Agria Tech Electrons. Re respectable finish inside your top five there. Devena Esports in P6 as well. SRB E Racing will finish seventh and an impressive drive. For Euphoria Drive X3M, they started 21st, they finish up well inside the top 10 in 8th position. Drive X Esports as well, so it's a Drive X P8, Drive X P9 here, as well as Branch Racing, they will finish in the 10th position here today. Corinthians Revelino finished P11 after a decent day for them. They've got Euphoria Drive X Scalpers as well, finishing in P12. Grande Primo, number 28. 13 for them. Atlantic Motorsports will finish in P14. Those are all of your runners that finished on the leading lap here today. Everyone else a lap down or more. Fitness Racing number 14. Interlagos Motorsports in P16 there with uh, Agriotech MV Pack. They finish in 17th place with Grande Primo 96 in 18th with uh, Luperini Racing P19 and Corinthians Neto in P20. Further back, Sub Racing Yellow, P21 with PC Gaming TV, P22 with Track Friends Racing with their major instant up towards the latter portions of the race. They end up finishing in P23. Grande Primo, P44, they finish in 24th place with Corinthian Socrates in 25th. Agria Tech, Davina Pizza, we've got Agria Tech, Sim Experience as well, P26 and 27th for them. Corinthians Villa, P28 with Fitness Racing, 0-2. 29th and Bravis e Motorsports. Horrible day for them. They are your last uh, team classified here today. Well, what, what a fantastic race that we have had here today. Just the absolute crazy fighting that we had for positions just inside your podium positions, inside the top 10 as well. It seems like drivers were fighting for absolutely everything, but surprisingly enough for the one team that didn't have to do a lot of fighting comes away with the race win here today. Positive Sim Racing, Porsche. What a brilliant performance. Yeah, great performance from Positive Sim Racing, Porsche. They uh, they absolutely showed why they uh, they deserve to be up there. They started third by the, the time in that pack. Sort of didn't panic. And then when that, uh, that Corinthians car made the mistake, they took advantage of it. And that's crucial. Once they made that breakaway, really it was theirs to lose in this race and uh, it's important to make that breakaway work and it certainly did for them. They got to about seven seconds ahead, but then it was all about managing the gap then uh, and it eventually came down to three and a half seconds. So they did a good job of managing that gap. So hats off to them. Great performance and great performance by the whole top three. Yeah, it was. It uh, was absolutely incredible. Just the talent behind the wheel of those uh, team cars. Of course, we got the uh, we got the appearance of a real life uh, Porsche Carrera Carrera Cup Brazil driver, Felipe Baptista, behind the wheel of that Shell V Power car right at the end of the race. And you know, one of the most experienced drivers in this field. And unfortunately for him, he wasn't hold, able to hold on. But he put in an absolutely brilliant effort. Uh, to try and bring that car home on the final step of the podium. But unfortunately, Paul, it uh, it didn't quite happen, but it was a absolutely brilliant effort. Oh, it was a tremendous effort. Too. A great battling as well. Those two teams, that, that entire lap going into the going into the penultimate lap was just absolutely tremendous. And uh, that's what we love to see in this car. You know, you've just been racing for 60-odd laps and you're still close together and you're still <laughs> battling it away. And uh, it was great. Okay, there was a little bit of door banging and uh, maybe Philippe Baptista would have felt a little bit aggrieved by that. But... At the end of the day, it was all it was all fantastic and ultimately fair, but uh, firm, firm but fair. Yeah, that is 
I guess the overall theme of this race, uh, it, I have to say, we had those single car spins, but not all that much egregious car-to-car -car contact. It has to be said, everyone's racecraft was pretty exemplary, uh, exemplary throughout this entire race. And that is going to be all that we have time for here today. An absolutely fantastic race indeed for all drivers involved. I've been Conor Maddock. That's been Paul Smith. Thank you very much to Istvan Ballo for the track cameras. Trackcams22.com is the website to go to if you want to have your broadcast look a little bit like a RaceBot TV broadcast. And uh, very much thanks to IRB Esports as well for letting us use their channel and allowing us to uh, bring the English coverage of an event that they very much helped uh, to organize with Porsche as well. Thank you very much to our Portuguese language broadcasters as well over on the mainstream. I haven't uh, seen what they do in this particular race, but it's uh, with a race like this, the, you can only do a fantastic job. And those guys are absolutely brilliant at what they do as well, despite not be, being able to understand a word they're saying. But that's it. That's our Race Sport TV here on the IRB Esports channel. We'll see you guys in the next Porsche event, the Porsche Esports Super Cup on the RSing Esports Network in a couple of weeks' time. Goodbye.